Where is it going? Good morning, good morning, good morning. On day 27, we are so close to the end. I can feel it. Um, the the tired is real. The jury went to Moselle this morning, did a jury view, and is headed back to the courthouse now. Once the jury gets back to court, we will have a brief amount of jury instructions, closing argument, and then the rest of jury instructions is how the judge said he was going to do it yesterday. Could that change? Yes. Could the judge do all of the jury instructions first and then argument? Yes. Could he split it and just do the preliminary instructions, then closing, then the rest? Yes. We'll see. We're going to go to some of the reports on Twitter. It seems that Jim Griffin was not out at Moselle today because he is the one doing closing arguments. I think that's a good choice for the defense, especially after yesterday. If the jury is already over Poot, which he told them in his opening they would be, it makes sense to bring Jim Griffin in to do closing. And so we will see how that goes. I want to know. I'll put up a poll in a minute and see what you think about it. Um, do you think, actually, Miguelina, let's just put up a poll now. Do you think having Jim Griffin do the defense closing is a good call? Yes or no? And then when court is back, we will go live to court and see what they have to say. Right now, we are just seeing the reports that the jury is back on the way. I'm going to answer some questions, and I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for in closing arguments. Will we finish closing today? We should. There is no reason these closing arguments should take a million years. There's a lot to cover. The defense gets one crack at it, but I'll tell you what I think they should cover in closing, just from my experience. I've got my coffee. I've got my cursy words. We've got one more day of trial. To all of you that were in the premiere for this week's podcast episode, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There were over 10,000 of you watching the podcast premiere with me this morning as I was like messaging you in the chat and getting ready, <laughs> messaging you in the chat and trying to finish eating breakfast um, because I was starving and I needed to have egg bites this morning. So with that, let's roll. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. I see Summer Dawn in the chat saying, girl, you know they're going to take their sweet ass time. Yes, but here's the thing. This jury is tired. I agree with you. These attorneys, let's be honest. We're friends. We're just friends. We're just friends. It's just a few of us on the internet. Let's be honest. Lawyers, lawyers don't mind hearing themselves talk. I know you're shocked by this news. I know you're shocked by this undercover breaking behind the scenes, deep dive expose into lawyers. A lot of lawyers like to hear themselves talk. Now, there are transactional attorneys who are like, please never talk to me ever. They're kind of like the coroners of the law world. They're like, please don't interact with people. But we're not talking about transactional attorneys. We're talking, we're talking about litigators. Litigators love to talk. <laughs> me, I'm I'm the problem. It's me. So with that, let's talk about what I would what I would want to see or what I want to see covered in closing for both sides. And then we'll get to no, let's do reporting first. And then I'll tell you what I want to see covered. Let's I withdrawn. I overrule myself and then I'm going to answer some questions. Um, so make sure you guys are asking them so I can see them clearly and we'll grab them um, as many as we can. Lisa PNW Pacific Northwest Fox Will Creighton or the AG do the closing? I haven't seen any reporting about who will. I suspect it's Creighton. It would be interesting for the AG. The only reason it might be difficult for the AG, the AG hasn't built a rapport with these jurors, clearly very knowledgeable about the case. And I went back and was looking at, um, I was looking at the photos from the photo pool over the last few days. And it seems like the AG has been there. I didn't know who the AG was, not my state. Um, but the AG has been there on the bench with the attorneys at least a number of days, but I hasn't really stood up and talked in front of the jury. I thought he was great, though. I was like, where were you? We could have used more of this the entire trial, but um, I think it would be hard to switch from Creighton, who has been really the main attorney in this case, to now having the AG do it. So we'll see. Um We'll see what they think. So going to the Twitters, Brian Enton posted 11 minutes ago now, Murdoch jury left Moselle area, headed back to the courthouse, closing arguments soon, and then posted jury now coming out of the wooded area, unclear exactly 
where they were. After they leave, we will walk down to check it out. So they're going to go back and check out where the jury is coming from. Um, let's see. Murdoch jury just left the area near the dog kennels at Moselle, and they are now in a wooded area on the opposite side of the street from Moselle. Um, they went into the trees, unclear what they were looking at. Oh, it's not unclear what they were looking at. If they were looking at the wooded area, they might've been looking for that shot trajectory, or they might've been looking to see if people could have hidden in the trees. Who knows? They're a jury. Uh, Murdoch jury and law enforcement arriving at Moselle. That was over an hour ago to view the scene. Um, and it seems that the jurors are coming in heavily, uh, tinted windows. That's appropriate. I'm very happy to see. Um, let's see. And then it seems that it seems that Enton was waiting at the property, um, to catch that footage. Great. So let's see, I'm going to go see what Avery has to say, um, real quick. And then we are going to talk about closing arguments, how those work and what I want to see. Um, so let's see what the reporting, what the information we have from court now is. Uh, this is Avery reporting on court TV. This is Emily covering Avery covering court TV. <laughs> it's trial inception. Um, will we hear the jury's questions or requests during deliberations? Yes, on the record. Okay. Will the jury have technology to view exhibits? Yes, they'll have a cleaned computer. Will the attorneys be present? They will be close, but not required to be in court. Yes, because they'll have to be in court if questions or requests are read on the record. Um Let's see. How long will the jury deliberate? Yeah, that's up to them. Will they be sequestered? There's no decision at this time. So that's where we're at. The jurors are on their way back to Moselle. Um, per the D. Moore, I think, the D. Moore, the jurors have left Moselle after a tour of the grounds that lasted an hour and 15 minutes. That's a longer time than I thought they would be there. Uh, much longer than I thought they would be there. So the jury took their time at Moselle and I think having this done right before um, right before deliberations is helpful to the jury one way or the other. Who knows what they will take away from that? Who knows what they will find most helpful from that? No word if Alec went on the jury view. He has the right to be there when the jurors are doing things, but it depends on the jurisdiction. It also depends on what his attorneys decided. The attorneys might have said, no, we're just going to go watch and make sure the jury, they're not saying anything. They're not being told anything. There's no witnesses present. So no, you're not coming. That might've been way more. So it really depends. He has the right to be there, but um, not all jurisdictions accommodate that. And if the lawyers are there, it's not necessarily uh, something that has to happen, if that makes sense. So let's talk about what I want to see from closing in the, in the chat. I want to hear what you want to see from closing too. So closing argument. The point is that the attorneys argue the case. They argue reasonable inferences from the facts. They argue if there's, especially if there's a split in authorities or experts, like we see in this case, they argue who the jury should believe, what the jury should take away from this case, and what the law says, and how the jury should apply the facts to the law. The state will go first, then the defense, then the state, that's it. There is no time limit on this, though you can go from helpful to in the weeds real quick. And if the state wants to be powerful in their closing, I think they need to stay out of the weeds when it comes to financial crimes and they need to get into the timeline. The timeline is what's important. I think we'll see the state arguing, look, he's at the kennels. He's getting a chicken out of Bubba's mouth. I want to hear no Bubba slander, by the way. I don't want to hear about hard-headed Bubba. Look, at my house, George, George is Bubba. Um, we love him dearly, but but the only person he listens to is my kid. So when my teen says, George, the, this cat follows him literally everywhere, and I think would follow him to school if he could. So they need to talk about the fact that he gets the chicken out of Bubba's mouth, puts it away. How much time is that? How much time does that take from the video? And the state started to go down this road, but didn't really tie it back around. So from the kennel video, that's before, because Bubba gets a chicken in his mouth during the kennel video. So from the time of the kennel video to the time he gets a chicken out of Bubba's mouth, talks to his family, does whatever, the hose is still going, puts the chicken down to the time when their phones go silent is minutes. So how does he get the chicken away from Bubba, put Bubba back in his pen, because Bubba's only listening to Alec, apparently, put Bubba back in his pen, get back to the house and not hear gunshots? How? 
And I think that is where the state needs to focus the timeline. And why? Why not go up and check? How do you get back home, lay down on the couch, turn on the TV, and hear nothing else? And then why do you lie about being at the kennels right during the small window when they were killed, according to the state's theory? That, when asked, when asked, what did you do after you got the chicken out of Bubba's mouth? I got out of there. Why say that? Why no regret? I got out of there or I left. I went out to the house. I went to take a nap. I was starting to sweat. I was hot. I got out of there. But that goes both ways for me. Does I got out of there mean he knows somebody's coming? Or does I got out of there mean he knows he doesn't want to be there when the time of the murders are when he's talking to people? I don't know. But the state needs to argue it. I think I got out of there is perfect and I hope the state brings it back up. I got out of there. We'll see. I think it can go both ways depending on what the jury's thinking. So they need to argue the timeline. They need to argue about the family guns. The defense is going to argue that they're not, that the science isn't perfect, and that those aren't family guns. They're similar guns. But I think the state has to hammer on who is coming onto this property at night, looking for Maggie and Paul, not going to the house to check and see if Alex there when his cars are all there, leaving him alive, and then he leaves and goes and sees his mom. Talk about the fact that he says he says he turned them over and checked everybody's pulse before he called 911, but he's only there for 17 seconds at the kennels to see them, perceive what happened, and then call 911. And then that timeline changed. And the defense is going to talk about trauma. He might not have known exactly what he did, but the GPS tells us that he got up there and we know from 911 that he called 911. And he said he got blood on his fingertips. He never explained where it went. He didn't wipe it on the white shirt. He didn't wipe it on his pants or his legs. It was nowhere. So where did it go? And why is he nervous to say he's cleaning up or he washed his hands? I checked their pulse and it, I was, this is my family and I washed my hands. Why be worried about saying that? Unless you did more than just wash your hands. So I think that's where the state needs to go. Timeline, timeline, timeline. He would sit on this jury stand and lie to you. We know that. Okay. Go through the inconsistencies. Leave alone the thefts. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. He didn't, he w didn't lie because he was afraid of SLED, right? He didn't lie because he was worried about SLED. He lied to Colton County. He lied to his friends. He lied, he lied, he lied. Fine, he lied. He's a liar. Great. Timeline. For the defense, they need to hammer on what the state did not prove. The state's expert used the state's last witness. He was a good witness. But what he said is there's too many variables and I can't rule out that this was two shooters. The state's, what I think was one of the state's best witnesses. Too many factors. Well, if there's too many factors, how do you get to a guilty verdict? And the state should, the defense should hammer on what reasonable doubt is. That jury instruction on reasonable doubt leans in their favor. The state's best witness cannot rule out that there is two shooters and no one can put a gun in Alec Murnau's hand. So how can you, as a jury, put this gun in his hand? They're going to lean into the sloppy investigation? Of course they are. Could, could SLED have solved this crime and found the person who did it had they secured this crime scene? Could they have gotten more footprints had they actually looked? The defense is going to argue Sled showed up and thought, oh, well, it's always the husband, so it's the husband. I don't think that's what they did, by the way. I think they were like, this is Alec Murdoch, fucking hell. Um, we're going to try to be deferential. I think they, I don't think they just leaned into him, but that's what the defense is going to argue, that they just leaned into him. And so we'll see the defense pointing it out. The state didn't do anything with that white shirt, or the state did everything with that white shirt until they realized that the confirmatory test came back and it wasn't blood, not a drop. But not a drop of blood goes both ways because not a drop of blood means that he lied about going and touching everybody and why lie about that? So how, and I think they need to, I think their theme of the case should be for the defense. The state can't put a gun in Alec Murdoch's hand. How can you? They haven't proven it. 
The circumstances don't prove it because there are reasonable explanations both ways on the circumstance. And when there are two reasonable explanations, you have to, that's what the instruction says, have to pick the one that leans towards not guilty. Though it might say acquittal in this state. We'll hear it together. That's the instruction to listen for. That one and the circumstantial evidence one. And that's, if I were the defense, that's where I would lean in. I wouldn't lean into we're so honored to represent him. I would lean into you've heard you've heard witnesses that are real mad at Alec Murdoch about the theft. He's going to be punished for that separate. You don't need to punish him for the theft and remind them of that. And then the state will do a rebuttal and it needs to be clear and concise. If they wander in the weeds, I'm going to lose. I'm going to I'm going to yell. Uh, Anna W said jury has arrived back at the courthouse. Wonderful. I'm going to answer some questions. Um, Chantel said, Emily, you should do closing. No, I'll just do it here. You know, you know how I, um, you uh, closing was my favorite. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I prepped my trials um, and how I prepped my cases from the moment I got them. Sometimes I got cases while they were still being investigated. Sometimes I got them before they were being filed. Sometimes I got them after they'd been filed. Sometimes I got them the day that they were going to trial and somebody was like, oh, here, we forgot about this because <laughs> uh, that's what working in a busy jurisdiction is like. So I'll tell you how I prep my cases and answer some questions while we wait for the court to come back into session, which should be pretty soon if the jury's back at the courthouse. This court is ready to go. I thought the judge would give them a half a day to prep closing. He's like, fuck no. <gasps> Mount up and ride, lawyers, which is uh, after going three weeks over their estimate, I can understand. And I think we will see closing complete at the end of the day today. I don't know if jury will get to deliberate today, but I think given how long this case has been, if they have Thursday and Friday, we could see, could see a verdict by Friday. I will, or at least some kind of a decision by Friday. I will tell you on, I will tell you tomorrow what I think if we start getting questions back and forth from the jury. But I do think closing will take most of the day. They'll take a break for lunch. So the order of closing, again, for all of you who are just popping back in, the state goes, then the defense, then the state. What everybody needs to not do is show these juries any more pictures of the victims, because that is exactly what this jury is not here for at this point. They're done. They're done. They're done. They're done. So I know a lot of you have feelings. I want you to listen to the closings and try to keep an open mind. It's going to be hard for the jury, too. If the jury is already leaning one way or the other or any members of the jury are leaning one way or the other, the confirmation bias of closing argument is real. My goal as an attorney in closing argument was to give the jurors that were we're seeing the case my way. Give the jurors that were leaning towards guilt all the words they needed to argue with the jurors who were undecided. I was trying to give them the arguments to make in the jury room. And there had been times twice that I remember very vividly where I'd gone in the jury room and I had seen on the whiteboard that the jury had broken down the case the way I had broken it down in closing after coming back with a guilty verdict. And I was like, oh, that actually really works. That actually really works when you see them breaking it down that way. Yes, Fred, I know there's a bird out there. There's also a, a window. So, you know, I don't think he's teasing you specifically. All right. Fred's offended. So I would try to give them the words that they needed to articulate my side of the case. And that is exactly what the prosecution needs to do and the defense needs to do. Give the jury the words to articulate your side of the case easily. Can any of us articulate the state side of the case easily? I mean, right now, the state side of the case is he lied and there was a storm and the world was crashing down. And somehow, instead of waiting for his father to die in two days, what he decided was that killing his wife and son is what was going to get him out of all the trouble in the world. What? They need to be able to articulate it better than that. So oh, with all of that. I'm going to answer some questions. Fred is, Fred is <laughs> a little bit. He's, he's chirping a little bit at the window. He's, he's very enthralled. We're actually sidebar. Sorry, we're taking a sidebar. I'm actually looking at doing some new landscaping in front of the window so that the cats have more birds and butterflies to look at. And me too. And me too. So George is sitting off, off screen 
looking out the window at the wildlife. Um, and so that's what we're doing. All right. With all of that, I'm going to get to some questions. We're going to wait for this court to come back into session when they do. I expect we will see a few brief jury instructions, argument, and then charging the jury with the rest of their instructions. However, the court could do most, excuse me, the court could do the bulk of the instructions first. It wasn't clear to me from what he said how he was going to do it. The court could do the bulk of the instructions first, then argument, then the final charge, which is you have now you have now heard the case. You may discuss it. Go forth and render verdict. So we'll see that. All right. Let's get to some questions. You have lots of them. We're going to just talk about this case. I don't think we have very long. If the jury, the jury is back at the courthouse, we don't have very long to wait for the court to go into session. I'm just going to make sure I can hear this while I'm looking at other tabs. And we're going to just go to some questions and, and chat while we're waiting. I have not decided yet what I'm going to do while we're on jury watch. Um, it really depends on when they start deliberating and how active they are with questions. But let me just make a note. Um, and I will, as we get started, I will send out a text to remind the text crew that we are live um, as court comes back. But the Lawnard alert, when I have a time to stream, it will be in the Lawnard alert. Um, and it will be on the text crew at text Emily, and it will be on Patreon and socials. So when I am going live to wait for a verdict, I will let you know in all of those places, if I'm going to go live, cause they've asked a wild question or something, I will let you know in all of those places. So make sure you are following me in at least one of them. <laughs> I will go live. The one I forget the most frequently is Twitter apologies. Uh, but law nerd alert will go out. So with that, um, let us go to questions questions when does the purple hoodie come out soon it's my birthday month <laughs> that's a great self-gift it will be out soon we have one more thing that we are waiting to finalize because we didn't want to drop it by itself so we have a few th we have one more thing we are waiting for um one more thing that we are waiting for all right outside of the courtroom we we see that there are there are those outside of the courtroom waiting for court to come back um, there's no audio, just video. So I will leave that up small. I imagine they're going to take the jury back in through the back, but Alec Murdaugh's not in court yet. This is actually a really helpful view because we will know when Alec Murdaugh is transported back into court, um, which seems to be right now because nothing can start until he's back in court. My kid turns three in a week. I can't believe it. Nikki, you're going to feel that way their entire life. My kid is almost 15 and I can't can't even can we get a britney yeeted update soon um we can get a britney yeeted update once i have once i have actually gotten the documents and reviewed it so during an ask me anything my answer would be i'm so sorry i have not um i have not the crowd outside cheered when ag wilson arrived ag wilson was pretty great look here's the thing elected officials aren't always great in court sometimes sometimes they have been um long long running trial dogs as as one would say they have been in the courtroom more than they've been out of the courtroom at the ag's level that's not always the case in every jurisdiction it was really nice to see someone who is an elected official who is the head of the state get in there and be a great trial lawyer um asked good questions would have liked to have seen him more in this trial honestly um it's interesting that he chose to uh, question witnesses so late in the trial. Truly, I thought he was great. Um, really did. So with that, I'm going to get to some more questions. Um, did I swoop? I don't remember. I did it again. Uh, Eugene Joe, I hope I pronounced that properly. You helped me get through some of the toughest times. Really appreciate your professionalism. We are here for you. You are not alone in the law nerd community. Um, and we have, we have, most of us, have been through very difficult life experiences. I think it's part of why this community is so, so deeply, deeply compassionate. Like law nerds, we've been through some shit and we're here to, to tell you about it on the other side. And I really do think it's one of the things that makes this community so damn special. Um, Natural Selection said, I am about to just send Blanca the buttons that pets use to talk to humans. Go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, so Bubba can just tell us who did it. I mean, if Bubba, if Bubba could just let us know. Um, AGLMTC said, good morning, coffee and all dressed chips that just arrived changed my life again. Emily, look, I don't take, I don't play when it comes to snacks. 
I do not. I do not take snacks lightly. I take snacks very seriously. My coffee does not taste the same. Mm. What beans did my husband buy? Baker. What beans are these? They taste different. My coffee tastes different. I have questions. Oh, I think I forgot to put collagen in it. Maybe that's why. All right. Good vibes for my paw nerd, Piper. She is getting spayed right now. Nervous dog mom. Piper will be great. Piper will be absolutely amazing. Um, Me, not that kind of orc. <laughs> Emily, today would be my oldest daughter's 21st birthday, but she passed in 2017. Still a happen happy heavenly birthday to your daughter this week is historically difficult. Of course it is. Thank you for giving me something else to focus on. I don't know if this is the most easy thing to focus on, but the law nerd community is here. Um, and you are not alone in that loss in this community. So happy heavenly birthday to your daughter. Nana said, will you be covering the Vallow day bell case? I don't know yet. I, I have not made a decision. I'm not saying no, but I'm definitely not yet saying yes. I know it's going to be audio only, which is very difficult for my brain to process. It is a very difficult case. I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. Oh, and by the way, if I didn't make the correct coffee, it's me. Like, I'm the problem. I might have just forgotten something in my rush this morning. Question, do you think the defense argument in opening that Paul left guns lying around so anybody could have gotten them and then going there to try to say Paul shot himself will come back to bite them? I don't know. Those types of differentiations tend to not be held against the defense as much because their job is zealous advocacy and they're allowed to kind of throw the spaghetti against the wall and see what sticks. Um, I think they will continue to argue guns could have been around. Guns could have been wherever. Um, be, but if there was a keypad that his brothers are using to get into the house, nobody addressed who else might have had the combo to that keypad. Maybe they just don't know and that's why they didn't bring it up. But there's a lot more there. Um, it's interesting because if if the defense, if the defense doesn't think that these are family guns and they're going to argue that it's junk science and tool marking is bullshit and all the rest of it, fine. Why go to the length to argue Paul left guns lying around? They're trying to cover that possibility too. So they're trying to cover both possibilities. It's like, look, these aren't family guns. But if you do think they're family guns, the only reason they're family guns is because Paul must have left them somewhere, which is interesting. So um, anyway, let's see. Sending a huge shout out to my boss, Tia, who is watching you for the first time. Well, Ariana's boss, Tia, hello. Me and my work bestie, McKenna, who is watching with me, welcome the law, to the Law Nerds community. Welcome, everyone, to the Law Nerds community. I love it when you welcome your friends and family to the Law Nerds community. Did we ever find out what the email the judge received yesterday? No, we didn't. The media didn't. We didn't. We don't know yet. Question, how are the jury members financially compensated for four weeks away from their lives? Six weeks away from their lives. Not well. It's normally about $15 a day, if that. So, yeah, not well. It is a tremendous financial burden to be on a jury like this. Tremendous. And some states like California doesn't consider financial hardship that much. The attorneys do when it comes to longer trials. They thought this was going to be three weeks. Imagine not being able to work for six weeks and what that would do. Some, some employers compensate for jury duty. Some do, but it really depends on the job, on the employer, et cetera. So I see some of the chat saying, I think it's $25 a day. That varies by jurisdiction too. Um, some places it's 13, some places it's 10, some places it's 15. Um, pinball nuts said we get 50. It really depends on jurisdiction. So that, um, why does Alec get this kind of trial when other murder trials last only a couple of days money? Oh no, no, no. Um, this is not a benefit. This long of a trial is not a benefit to Alec at all. Why is it this long? I love seeing you guys share in the chat, by the way, how, how much it looks like Alec Murdoch is arriving in court, how much you get compensated for jury duty in your jurisdiction. This is because the state brought in all of the 404, the financial crimes. Most murder cases do not need this much time. It is a circumstantial case. He did have more defense witnesses because he has money. The amount of defense witnesses and the experts that are being flown in from here, there and everywhere is because he has means, but that was only a few days of this trial and it was to rebut the state. So, 
Um, that's why. All right. Alec Mordaugh is back in the court uh, or walking back into court, which means we should actually be rolling pretty soon from court now that the defendant has entered the building. So I don't think a long trial is a benefit for him. And I think it's it's a highly, well, it's an entirely circumstantial case with a whole lot of moving pieces because they brought in, well, the state brought in all of the moving pieces. So that was really the state's decision. Um, going to see where Maggie's phone was. Key sunsets, that's what I was thinking too. Going to see how far Maggie's phone was. Um, Anya said, watching the AG feels like I've been watching a JV and a <laughs> game and varsity is now playing. I thought he was really, really good. Really good. Though I will say, there were times in yesterday's rebuttal that I thought Harpootlian was very effective. Annoying, but very, very effective. He had Ronnie Crosby pissed. Some some are going to say, of course Ronnie Crosby was pissed. He was impugning his integrity, this and this and that. But um, others are going to say, yeah, Ronnie Crosby clearly is still mad. So of course he is. Um Long crime is saying closing arguments soon. I'm seeing the chat saying court TV is saying this afternoon. Let's see what is being reported. I'm going to wait because the defendant is in court and they wouldn't bring him in if they're not going to do anything. They might charge the jury first and then do closing this afternoon. But I think we will definitely have something that we will see. Um, and I'm not seeing anything on um, Twitter. Don't. Don't worry, the next thing we have to cover is everything that got unsealed in the Idaho Kohlberger case. Good morning. Do you think you would ever do a meetup? Probably. A weekend in Nashville would be amazing. I will I will be doing some meetups this year. I have not had a chance to plan them. It's been very busy. Um, so. Will the jury be able to do interviews when it's over? They will be able to choose to. Their information won't be put out there in the public for the public to get to them. Um, Life with Gigi, burning question. Does the defendant get all the evidence in advance? Yes. Or is it a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. When you get to rebuttal, things can get a little squishy on how soon they give it to the defense. But everything should be turned over. I think it's a problem that the coroner or the uh, the pathologist didn't turn over her notes the state should have asked her for those and those should have gotten turned over or the state should have indicated that they had them and the demotions to not turn them over because they're work product and they just turned over the reports. Normally the underlying notes don't get turned over depending on the circumstance, but sometimes they do. Sometimes the contemporaneous notes do get turned over. So um, yes, the defendant gets all the evidence. It is completely improper to not give the defendant evidence. There is no criminal trial by surprise. Civil is a bit different, but civil you're not dealing with the same constitutional rights that you're dealing with in a criminal trial. So, um, question, do the jurors just walk around in silence? Yes. Or does someone explain where the bodies were? No, they walk around in silence. It is not a trip where they're giving, they're giving evidence or the attorneys because the attorneys can't really explain because the attorneys would then be giving evidence so no they walk around in silence emily what device equipment do you use for your fun voice changes my partner loves it and wants to order the same for his virtual team meetings it is on my i have a list on my amazon shop with all of my things it is a roadcaster pro 2 um and that's what i use i know there are other devices but because i podcast and i bring sound in and out um, and bring sound in from court and the computer and everything. It is a Rodecaster 2. Because I had to get the new one when they released a new one, even though the old one works just fine. Now the old one's a travel one and the new one's a new one. And I need to put the voice changers on the travel. Man, it's a whole thing. <laughs> Christopher Cook said, I also recall Alec describing the kennels as being chaotic before getting out of there. Odd. He did say that. KJ said, I hope the state points out that Alec um, said that all the house lights were on and he thought PM were back, but he left the car running per OnStar. That's a very fair point too. And who turned off the lights at the kennels? Like the lights at the kennels had been on in the videos. So who turned off the lights in the kennels and when did those turn off? Um, the caretaker directly contradicts AM and said that he came back at 6.30 AM. He denies that. That's huge. Who would you believe? Why would she lie? Um, I found Miss Shelley to be really credible and they didn't, there was nothing 
that really rebuts it other than Alex saying, well, maybe she doesn't quite remember. Um, Dark Gaming said new here. I want to say I absolutely love how you break it all down. Thank you. Uh, you rock. Thanks. Huge fan of the cursey words. Same. There are some who are not a fan of the cursey words. I got a comment the other day that they could do without the cursed words, but there's plenty of places to go and do without the cursed words. <laughs> this is just not one of them. Um, Linda Kay said, what dad wouldn't cry and say, if only I had stayed instead of I got out of there. It's an odd thing. And I think the state needs to pick up on it. We'll see if they do. Um, Euro girl said, my dog is hard headed and will only listen to me. If I left in a golf cart, she would follow and ignore any family trying to stop her. It's a very fair point. Um, Kathy said, I can hear state trooper outdoor target practice right now. And they are three miles from the house. I don't see how he wouldn't have heard a thing. They did the experiment inside the house. And the experiment inside the house was not at the same time of day, blah, 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 blah. But it was very, very hard to perceive. So we will see. But that's my experience as well, too. Um, where I live, the gunshots travel quite far. Um, Linda, thank you for the super chat. Um, Aggie said there was still a dog out when he called 911. Why else would he say here during the call? I don't know if there was still a dog. There was no dog out and he never said that he put the dogs back up. So, um, love you. Never change D said justice for Bubba facts. Cindy, Emily, if someone suggested I gun and clothes could be in the septic tank. Oh, suggested the gun and clothes could be in the septic tank. Do we know if Sled ever checked? I don't know. Can you just eat things into your septic tank? This is well outside my realm of experience. And wouldn't the new owners discover it? Wouldn't some, I mean, I feel like that's way too discoverable. So, uh, Jeanette said, did we listen to 911 again and see when does the keypad? Not yet. Um, it looks like the judicial, the court's judicial assistant. I just saw her walking back and forth. I don't research attorney, judicial assistant. So we'll see. Did we listen? I did not yet. Cause if we hear it in the beginning of the call, then he's at the house, not the kennel when he's saying he's then. And I want to see, again, it doesn't have to be the door. I'm curious, but also I need to look at it with the OnStar data. And that might be more of a deep dive than this jury is going to do. I think he used the hose in the kennels to clean up. I mean, or the skinning shed. If he cleaned up, if he did this and cleaned up, they never seemed to check it. Bree said, who speaks first in closing? Prosecution, then defense, then prosecution. And yes, the prosecution gets a rebuttal. They have the burden, so they get more airtime. Tracy, if the instruction tells them to lean towards the one that is not guilty, doesn't that plant not guilty in the minds of the jury? It will either say not guilty or acquittal, but that's the reasonable doubt instruction. If there are two reasonable explanations, you have to pick the one. So doesn't it's explaining the burden. Does that plan it in their mind? Maybe, but it explains the burden. But what we see statistically is criminal conviction rates are still quite high. It's not as if it's not as if those those statistics are low. Jury jurors meet this burden every day. Um, so, what if a juror? Uh, what if as a juror you don't feel one option is reasonable? Then you don't pick that option because it's not reasonable. It's not beyond all possible doubt. It's beyond all reasonable doubt. The instruction says that. So, no. Um, yeah, so no. Our new Neanderthal said our defense ego is too big to use free consulting available from LawTube yourself. They shouldn't. I don't think that's an ego thing. I don't think they should. I, A, I'm not consulting. B, I don't know as much as they know. We only know what has been presented. So we are giving a perspective, not inside, but of the jury. Um, if I was consulting on a case, which I am not, but if I was, I would want a lot more information, more from the court file, more than what the jury has seen, more than what is generally proper evidence. You would need to know all of it. They, uh, all of us that give commentary only see what's presented to the jury unless we have, I mean, an inside um with one of these attorneys, which is not my preference. I don't want to get involved in the cases I comment on. I want to comment on it. Um, I just want to give commentary. 
That's what I like doing. And I want to look at it from what the jury has seen. Because once you start getting too much information, it's much harder to say. But remember, the jury has only seen this. The jury doesn't know all of that. And so, no, I don't think I don't think it has anything to do with ego. I think once you are in a trial and once you are prepping a trial, you need to look at your team and stay in your lane. Truly. The way I like to prep cases is starting with closing and working backwards. What do I know? What am I what am I showing to the jury? And how am I going to argue it? And then I go from there. So that's that's how I work backwards. What do I need to argue in closing? What are the elements of the crime? First, start with the jury instruction. What is the crime? What are the elements of the crime? Start with those. How do I explain these to the jury? What facts prove these elements of the crime? And if you can't get there, don't file the case. If you can't easily sit down with the elements of the crime and the facts and go, these are the elements of this crime and these are the facts that go to it. If you can't do that, you don't have a case, don't file it. Prosecutors get to choose to file it. You also get to choose to not file it. Something we very liberally exercised. It was like, oh, nope, not filing that. Because you have to be able to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt when you file it. You don't hope it gets better. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. Only in really violent circumstances with regard to, uh, sometimes you're like, ah, I have enough to prove it. I hope it still gets better. I hope there's more. Once we get the cell phone data, like there will be more, but it's rare. Will they deliberate over the weekend? I'm not sure in this jurisdiction if they will, but we'll find out before the end of the day. Um, can we see you in trial anywhere? Thank you for being awesome. No, you can't. <laughs> you That's one of those you had to catch it live sort of things. None of my cases were televised. I am very happy for it. Question, if the jury hangs, does that trigger a retrial or is that the end of the process for Alec? It depends on the AG. They can choose to retry. They can choose not to retry. They can ask for it to be dismissed and choose to refile it later. It depends. It depends. Question, can the lawyers object? Excuse me, Angel. Oh, can the lawyers object during closing? Yes. It is considered poor form to do so. Um, it is, it is almost considered like, it's kind of gauche. It's like, <gasps> you're objecting during closing, but yes, lawyers can object during closing and they can object to the most common objections during closing are states like misstates the facts or misstates the law. We saw this with Elaine. Elaine misstated the law on defamation like four times during closing. Misstates the facts and misstate the law are the biggest, um, are the biggest objections that you'll see. Most of the other stuff, they let it go. So, um, let's see. I'm looking at what Avery Wilkes is reporting. This is from now. Um, all right. Let's go to the pool report from what was going on at the jury view because now we have more information from reporting. So let's find out what happened at the jury view and then I'll get back to a few questions while we are waiting for closing arguments to begin. We're just creating a live show, like a full live show this morning. I mean, we're just here. We live here now. We live here now. All right. This is going to Avery Wilkes' Twitter. Um... Pool report four has just arrived from V. Um, Valerie Buellen. Oh, Valerie follows me. Hey, awesome. We're going to follow back. Uh, from a uh, WSJ national reporter, they pulled reporters out of a hat to see who was going to go to the jury view. So I'll also go to her Twitter and see in a second um, what her reports are there. Pool report four has just arrived at 1031 a.m. Attorney General Alan Wilson left the property in an SUV driven by CCSO Sergeant Daniel Green. So Attorney General Alan Wilson was at the jury view. So there's that. At 1032 a.m., a convoy of a dozen vehicles processed, processed out of the driveway. The vans carrying the jury were in the middle. Of the group of vans and SUVs, the vehicles turned left out of the driveway instead of turning right the way we came. It's not clear whether they were headed to a second location or back to the courthouse by a different route. 
The pool was taken to the kennel at 10.34 a.m. John Marvin Murdoch, personal representative of Maggie's estate, had requested that the media not be granted access to the scene or only abbreviated access, so the visit was fairly truncated. We had roughly 14 minutes to view the kennels and shed. It is a heavy place to visit. The property has stood vacant for 20 months and the grass is high. Some items seem to be left where they fell, including a deflated football behind the kennels and a tube of sanitizing wipes in the shed. There is a yellow hose wrapped haphazardly in the spot described by Roger Dale Davis, the caretaker for the dogs. There are no animals in the kennels. There was no ATV visible and no significant or significant remaining farm equipment. BB is very good at this. <laughs> was it is Avery's comment. Quote, the feed room feels like a haunted place. I'm sure the jury felt it too. It is roughly 10 feet deep and six feet wide, according to measurements taken by Special Agent Melinda Worley. Crime scene expert Kenneth Kinsey described Paul as standing about five inches into the feed room or five feet into the feed room when he was hit by the first shotgun blast to the chest. The doorway is off center and on the right. There is a shelf on the left at waist high. Standing in the center of the small room, which is roughly six feet wide, your a uh, pooler could not see to the left outside the doorway going to Paul um, not perceiving who's attacking him because you cannot see to the left outside the doorway. And that's the direction the shots came from. It's a really helpful observation. Um, so your pooler could not see to the left outside of the doorway where Mr. Kinsey said the shooter would have been the concrete pad where Paul fell is within sight of the corner of the shed where Maggie's body was found. <sighs> Maggie fell roughly 12 steps from where Paul would have fallen. And they said 12 steps for me at 5'7", also um, 12 steps for Stephen Gershon at 6'1". Steps. That's, I mean, that's heavy. And that shows you how close it is. Because for me, maybe this is, maybe this is neurospiciness, maybe it's just me. But for me, um, hearing the feet and distance measurements is different than being like, it was 12 steps away. 12, 12 steps away. Um, that's so close. And again, this goes to the state's argument, or I think it should go to the state's argument. We're going to take a pause just because <sighs> this goes or should go to the state's argument in closing. Maggie was running towards Paul. The way she fell indicates she was coming towards. And if that is the case, it indicates that she is not running away from a perceived threat. She is running towards her kid. So if that is the case, the state has a very strong argument that it's because she either wanted to fight, but she has no defensive wounds or because she needed to see what happened and she didn't immediately turn and flee because she didn't perceive a threat. And if she didn't immediately perceive a threat to her, is it because the person she saw holding the gun was her husband? And she was trying to process what was happening. And processing her husband there is more than trying to process a threat of an unknown person and fleeing for her own life. The judge is taking the stand. We'll get back to that in a minute. I'm sure glad for the break. Let's see what we're going to do. I'll keep reading that, I promise. Good morning. When they bring the jury, I'll go back to it. Same thing before we bring the jury. Sorry, y'all, that it's just, yes. it's visceral hearing how close they were for me. Um, wait, we're approaching. We're approaching silently. <sighs> Anyone good at lip reading? And then the camera angle is like, nope, what we're not going to do. They're going to be talking about closing. So. Sorry, mom's in the chat. <sighs> All right. I'm going to go finish the jury view while they are talking. No, because I want to see while they are talking. Hold on. Here's my solution. I'm going to go read it 
while they are talking on another tab because you don't need to see what I'm reading. And um, I'll just talk over this. That's the play. But it's sad. I mean, the visceralness, this is a horrific crime. Whichever way, whether you think the state proved it or not, whether you think he did it or not, it's what happened, happened. Um, who did the thing is the biggest question here, but it's just heartbreaking either way. Um, all right. So 12 steps apart from each other. I'm going back to Avery Wilkes reporting on what the pool reporter um, from the Wall Street Journal who was selected out of a hat to go to the crime scene. And you know what? I appreciate having pool reporters at the at the walkthrough to give kind of the visceral, <clears throat> give the visceral information. So let's see. The interior of the feed room appeared to be redone with newer plywood and parts had been painted. The back window the back window remains and the bullet holes are large and cracked around the edges. There was significant testimony about the bullet hole in the quail house. The hole is still visible and is in cardboard that appeared to be stapled to the side of a structure. Um, and then that was the end of the reporting from the scene. I'm going to go back to the um, reporter, uh, Valerie Bauer-Ellen, I think is the, I'm terrible at pronouncing things. Um, right, but writing a book about the Murdoch saga for Penguin Roundham House. So um, winning winning the lottery on the jury view is pretty awesome. So let's see. I don't see any tweets um, about it on her Twitter. So we will continue on later. The attorneys are still up at the bench talking off of the... Um, Talking off the record, I have not heard about the um I've not heard about the defendant. Why is there no audio right now? They're at sidebar. I know it's so annoying. I wish it was on the record, but they're at sidebar. So now we've got prosecutor, prosecutor, defense, defense. Here, let's switch and, and take a look at the um three video feed real quick. Uh, not if you're not gonna show us what's going on up the bench. Ugh. Go back. I need to just control things. <laughs> go, back the, go back to the bench. Weird. Emily wants control. Yes. Of the cameras. Of the cameras. But it's, uh, they're up at sidebar. Hold on. Let me make a note. What day are we on? We're on day 27. Uh, closing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In the chat. So they do know how to sidebar. Does the court reporter document sidebars? It depends on the nature of the sidebar. So I can't believe it's March. Ugh. It depends on the nature of the sidebar. If this is just, if they're arguing a matter of law, then yes, it goes on the record. If they are scheduling or talking about scheduling, then it doesn't. So it really just depends. Ugh. So let's see. Um... Is A.G. Wilson there? I couldn't see and haven't seen yet. I would imagine that the A.G. would be there. Question, do the attorneys and judges ever get called for jury duty? Yes. Judges, I don't think so. I think their names are removed from the pool, but attorneys do. I've been called for jury duty. Uh, not since I moved, but I've been called for jury duty. If so, are they ever chosen to be on a jury? I've never been chosen to be on a jury. My friends and family have never been chosen to be on a jury. They normally ask, do you know anyone who does this? And... um my mom was called to jury duty with a judge that I, Judge Wyndham, who I just absolutely adored. And um, she went on to jury duty and he was like, oh, you know, do you know anyone in law enforcement, DA's office, public defender's office, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yes, my, um, my daughter is a deputy district attorney in this courthouse. I was really glad she was at my courthouse so we could go to lunch. My daughter's a deputy district attorney at this courthouse. And Judge Wyndham was like, oh, who? And she's like, Emily Baker. And he just kind of giggled and said, oh. <laughs> and he was like, I have very, very kind words for your daughter. And then my mother was excused um, from jury duty. So, yes, I've never gotten to do jury duty because of lawyer. But I've had, I've kept lawyers on my, I've kept jury duty, I've kept lawyers on my panels. Um, so, uh, let's see. Did you put, oh, I'll go look. Once they start talking, I'll go look and make sure that I've put my in-ears. These are, these are audio in-ears. So I'll go make sure I've put them in there. 
Um, Avery said jury will deliberate over the weekend if needed and if hung, Newman will not let them off easy. Oh no, 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 no. They will get they will get charged. If they come back and are like, we are unable to render a verdict, they will there's a pretty um a pretty sturdy charge that they get read if they are hung about the amount of time that they are the best people to render a verdict. They will get charged um with they will get told. So they will be instructed that they will need to um, go back and try again. And the court will ask, is there any questions that you need? And then if one juror is not deliberating, they can remove that juror for an alternate. And that's been done in cases too. When one juror refuses to deliberate, deliberate they'll say, is somebody refusing to deliberate? And then they will yeet. They will yeeteth the person that's refusing to deliberate. This is a long time. Um, Quesadilla Pickles, Emily, I love you. Thank you for being as objective and classy as you are. I don't know. Half the chat thinks I'm way too pro prosecution. No, that's not true. Chat, you're lovely. There are there are a few commenters on the internet that think I am too pro prosecution. Others that think I am too pro defense, and that's when I realize I am. Pro There's the AG, really in the right spot when um, two different sides are arguing that I am too biased towards the opposite side. So I try to be objective, um, and I try to tell you where I can't be objective. There. are there are things in this case that are hard for me. Um, but this is a difficult circumstantial case. No matter how much you dislike Alec Murdoch, I don't think there's anybody in the chat that thinks Alec Murdoch is a good dude at all. I don't think anybody thinks anything. I don't think anybody has warm feelings toward Alec Murdoch. I sure don't. But it doesn't mean the state has proven it. And it doesn't mean they're able to put a gun in his hand. And it doesn't mean that they're able to... There's, when their expert said yesterday, there are just too many factors and I can't rule out two shooters. That's really hard for the prosecution. Really hard for the prosecution. Really hard. So the thing that I struggle with most in this case is I see it reasonably both ways. I think I'm still hung. <laughs> Truly. Um, Though I think if I give a little more leeway to one side or the other, I think I give the defense a little more leeway for shenanigans just because they're the defense and they get a little more leeway for shenanigans. The defense is fighting for Alec Murdoch's freedom. That is their job. The state should be fighting for justice not to win. And I absolutely hold them to that standard. And so when the state gets into shenanigans, I can be more critical of that because of the weight that they carry with their job and the power that they carry with their job. So when there's shenanigans, I get annoyed. Emily is hung. Yes. <laughs> and I hope to help you understand so that you can have your own opinion and your opinion is valid. And your opinion, truly your opinion right now is supported by the evidence. As long as you're not relying on the Netflix documentary, then it's not supported by the evidence. <laughs> Kay McD, thank you. So stoked to get through closing so I can consume all the podcasts and documentary stuff now. Stayed away from the better sense of how the jury might see things. And it's hard because the jury's going to see Alec Murdoch as a despicable human being. How do you not see him as a despicable human being? It doesn't mean he killed his wife and son. Why are we all giggling? I think Poot's angling for an early lunch. It's noon. It's noon on the East. What are you doing if you're Poot right now? Your Honor, I know there's an hour. Let's just take lunch and come back this afternoon. And I, the, the women in this courtroom that are bespeckled have the best glasses. The judge's judicial assistant has had incredible glasses. The, um, the sheriff who has been sitting with and walking with the Murdoch family has had incredible glasses. Um, I think she's the security for them to get in and out of the courthouse. Deputy spec, like in just incredible glasses. All right. Hopefully we'll get to hear. So no, bring, bring the audio. <laughs> Damn it. Bring the audio. <sighs> Why didn't they think he hired someone to kill them? He took the guns Paced nervously knowing it was happening. He was shocked when he saw the devastation. I don't disagree with this assessment. Why didn't the state look into that? I don't know. If they did, they didn't find enough of a trail to go after it. Um, Karen Nixon said, you Rocky DB, the jurors will be told that Long Road, 
The jurors will be told that long road wasn't paved then and the trees are newly planted uh, via Diddy. Hear the gunshots saying so much. Will the jurors be told? They were charged yesterday that things have changed. So they were told yesterday about things had changed and the time that it's been. What is going on in this courtroom right now? They're explaining whatever happened at the bench. They're explaining to Alec. But I don't know what they're explaining. Um, we have 34,000 people. Oh, this was a minute ago. We have 48,000 now. So thank you to the YouTube things. Did we ever decide if Alex said I did him bad versus they did him bad from day six? It's been argued both ways. I did him so bad and they did him so bad. I don't know what the jury will decide. I think people have individually made up their minds. Emily, I played a butterfly bushes and placed bird feeders um, and a bird bath in front of my cat's favorite window. Just know you're not alone. Thank you. I feel like less of a nerd. <laughs> Look, Kitty TV. Three defense attorney and one prosecutor. Interesting. I mean, they all want to hear what's going on. It's fine. Um, just showed Buster. I saw that. Wilson was at the site visit. We covered that a little bit earlier. I think that's fair. He's not doing closing. Creighton's going to be doing closing. Um, the Daily News summary said, we will miss you when these trials are over. Don't worry. I'll still be here at least twice a week live. Bye, Dr. B. Safe drive. Mind the deer. Um, I will be here on Tuesday and Thursday during my normal streams. And on Wednesday, the Emily shows out. And on Friday, Quick Bits will be back. I'm going to be catching up. So, <laughs> so don't worry. There will be plenty of Emily. And if you haven't like binge listened to the podcast, it's there. Terry Summerfield said, was there any proof that Bubba was ever out of this kennel? Yes, he caught the chicken. I don't remember anyone mentioning dog prints. We saw no dog prints. The caretaker said the rooster would get on them and tease them. And the dogs killed him. That had been in the past, but he had a chicken in his mouth. He was out. All right. You may bring the jury. Y'all. 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 It's almost time for closing. Janice, there have been some narcotic charges against Alec. I have not looked into those much. I think it's possible. I don't know what's... I don't even know. There's so many charges. Jenny said, I'm a nurse, but you and your commentary have me second guessing my career choice. Oh no, you are doing the, the Lord's work. You can be a law nerd while having another profession. Glued to my screen in this case. Thanks for being here. Oh no, lots of us are law nerds, but you are doing the Lord's work as a nurse. Look, what we don't need in the world is more lawyers at this point. We need more good lawyers. We need more diverse lawyers, um, but we need a lot of nurses. So thank you for the work that you do. Um, but you can be a, a nurse and a law nerd. So... You know, here we are. The jury is present, sir. All right, thank you. Let's see what's going to be instructed. All right, it is 12 12 in the East. The jury is present in court. A whole bunch of shit happened off the record. That's annoying. We probably won't ever know. Wait till everyone gets settled. <laughs> Why is there a prosecutor still standing? The judge is not thrilled. He's like, sit the fuck down. Hey, welcome again, once again. He's so uh, diplomatic. Day number 27. And you have heard all of the testimony, received all of the evidence. Uh, you've visited the scene of the alleged crimes and now it's time for closing arguments first by the state mr waters oh no charges <laughs> thank you Honor. right into it court. right into closing arguments closing arguments are starting now good morning it's been a long trial hasn't it no shit on june 7th 2021 at the Moselle property in Colleton County. Maggie Murdoch and Paul Murdoch were brutally and maliciously murdered at the kennels by Alec Murdoch. Malice is an element. Paul, as you know, suffered two shotgun blasts. Maggie suffered five blackout rifle wounds. And after an exhaustive investigation, mm -hmm. there is only one person 
who had the motive, opportunity. who had the means, who had the opportunity to commit these crimes, and also whose guilty conduct after these crimes betrays him. Oh, consciousness of guilt. I wondered if we were going to get there. The defendant was the one person who was living a lie. The defendant is the person on which a storm was descending. And the defendant is a person where his own storm would actually mean consequences for Maggie and Paul and consequences for those who trusted him. And that person is the defendant, Richard Alexander Murdoch. I know this has been a long trial because it's a complicated case. And I'm not going to talk forever. Good. I promise. But Lies. I am going to try to distill this down for you. And the Good. first thing I want to do is distill set the stage. It. And to set the stage, we have to understand a little bit about Alec Murdoch and who he was and who he is. He was a person of singular prominence and respect in this community. I don't disagree. But he's also a person who's been able to avoid accountability for all of his life. I don't disagree with that either. While he was outwardly giving the illusion of wealth and a very lucrative law practice, some bad land deals and that sort of thing, exacerbated by uh, the economic recession, led to some financial problems. And then he had some big cases in the early 2000, 2011, 2012. And all his partners, and you've heard testimony to this, thought that that had taken care of things. You've heard cases like the Thomas case and the Pinckney case and the Plowler case and the Badger case. But the evidence that you've heard shows that the defendant became so addicted and so dependent on a velocity of money that the millions of dollars in legal fees that he was receiving was not enough. And so he started to steal. And how did he steal? He stole by billing personal expenses to the firm. He stole by stealing from his own family. You heard the testimony about uh, the check he stole from his brother Randy. But then the main ways were two schemes that he developed. And the first one was to get checks made out from the client trust account to Palmetto State Bank to fast talk the staff and fast talk the clients I with those like disbursements the fast talk and then take it to Palmetto State Bank so I'm where his buddy Russell would again. convert those and use those to pay personal expenses. And each time until the end, it worked because the client was also getting a big check. And they were walking out of there thinking that everything had been fine when it was not. But then in 2015, he opened up the fake Forge account. Okay. And then all he had to do was get disbursements made out to the Forge account. The jury's going, and this has and to do with the murder. And once he did that, he would convert those to his personal mm -hmm. use. And to do that, though, he also had to fast talk staff and fast talk clients. And that scheme continued up until everything fell apart in the end. The other thing you have to understand is during this time when he's earning millions of dollars and stealing millions of dollars, he's also borrowing millions of dollars from wherever he can. The bank, his law partners, his father, and it still wasn't enough. And this slow burn was continuing and continuing until the boat crash happened in February of 2019. And that changed everything. That set in motion things that were going to happen because of the criminal charges related to that case as well as the civil uh, charges related to that case. And in the aftermath of the boat case, things changed. The pace of his stealing increased. In fact, that's when he stole the money from Tony Satterfield that you heard from. Ultimately stole about 4.5 million between the Satterfields and others. And unlike other cases, Tony I Satterfield, who was the son of his longtime housekeeper, he took all the money, took every bit of it. And that was coming to a head as we move into the spring of 2021. Because Brayton there thinks been this some is setting publicity, the stage. And you heard from Tony Satterfield that he was, uh, the defendant reached out in the spring of 2021 because there had been publicity and saying, hey, I'm still working on the case, everything's fine, I'm still working on the case, it's good. 
But the reality is the defendant didn't have that money to pay it back. And he had one saving grace. Because as you've heard, they don't get paid until the end of the year. And his saving grace was the Ferris case, which they tried in December. They get the verdict and get paid in March. And that's when he convinces Chris Wilson to send those $792,000 of fees to him. But the problem is that only lasted for about two months. $792,000 only lasted for about two months. Right. And then he's running out of money again. Meanwhile, Wild. you've heard in the boat case that Mark Tinsley was seeking to get a large personal recovery from Alec Murdoch of $10 million because he thought, as many people did, that he was wealthy and had a lot of money. And when they said he like didn't, a lot easier he filed to get a motion to compel. When you are and you've heard wealthy. testimony about whether or not that had been granted, but it doesn't change the fact that that's what Mark Tinsley was seeking to do. And that boat case hearing had been scheduled for June 10th. In May of 2021, as we move into June, that's when Alex owned paralegal got the expense check for the Ferris case, but not the fee check, and tried to raise that to Alec and couldn't get a straight answer, tried to raise it to Chris Wilson and couldn't get a straight answer to his office. And so goes to Jeannie Seconder, and Jeannie Seconder goes to the partners, and they can't get an answer about that either. And they want to, an answer to that because they're worried, because Alec has been talking about structuring fees, and they're worried he may be trying to hide assets because of the boat case, and they don't want to be a part of that. Okay. Yeah, they didn't. We heard that. All of these things are coming to a head, and his finances are falling apart. And you heard from the banker but there. You why heard then? where his finances were at on June 7th, Yeah, 2021. they heard. It wasn't And you good. saw what happened in the wake of that. Within a short period of time, he was negative $347,000. On June 7th, 2021, he was in the office. He was working on the boat case, working on those financial uh, disclosures. When Jeannie Seconder came in and confronted him about those fees that he no longer had and couldn't pay back. And on June 7th, 2021, and he tells this to Jeannie Seconder, his father Randolph is having a very difficult time. And while I don't know why the closed they might have stopped. said it was some positive news, the reality is, is that he was a very, very sick. And he had always been someone that the defendant could go to, that he could borrow money from. And so that pressure is happening as well. And on June 7th, 2021, as all these pressures were mounting, the defendant killed Maggie and Paul. And how do we know that? We're going to talk in detail about that. But the timeline puts him there. Go to the timeline. The forensic timeline puts him there. Look at raised to wake. The use of your his screen, family weapons your screen went on corroborates Creighton. that. Yeah, even closed caption are sick of the financial crimes and his lies and guilty actions afterwards confirms it. The guilty actions we'll afterward is interesting. In great detail. Before we get to that though, I want to finish out because in the wake of this timeline, everything changes. All those things that were coming to a head immediately go away. It's a different world now. They're not asking about the Ferris fees anymore. And you heard testimony to that. Mark Tinsley doesn't believe the case is going to have the same value anymore because the sympathies of the case have changed after this tragedy. And you heard that. And who would better understand that than Alec Murdoch, who does the same work? The boat case hearing goes away. And everyone immediately rallies around Alec Murdoch. And it worked because it allowed him to borrow $250,000 from Johnny Parker, his law partner, who of course wouldn't have loaned him that money if he knew what Alec was up to, and allowed him to go to Palmetto State Bank and get $350,000 and an off the books loan that hadn't even been 
applied for and to send that money to Chris Wilson and convince Chris Wilson to pay another $192,000 of his own money and to send an email to the firm that everything was okay. And that made it another month or so until Annette Griswold <coughs> found that first check And the defense check is going to argue that it made it harder for him to get money. And up the forge accounts. Okay. And then and what happened forge. in the wake of that? That's what was a good the argument. reaction? What's the reaction to fake forge? Bush. Within a day of September 3rd of him being forced to resign, his buddy Chris Wilson is trying to see him, comes and sees him on September 4th and confronts him about what he's been doing. And then within two hours, the side of the road happens. And Alec is a victim again. When accountability was at his door, he was a victim again. And that's and his he theme told of the case. An extremely detailed lie and went so far as to draw a competent, competent sketch with the police of this assailant. And the accountability that had arrived at his doorstep again, he tried again. Try to get it to go away, and it worked for a little while. People thought, oh my gosh, what's happened here? Should we be suspicious of Alec anymore? But this time it fell apart a little quicker because his own brother figured out that he was trying to buy drugs, and the case fell apart very quickly. This is the setup for what we look huh. at and what's going on. And it seems like a story that's far removed from most people's experience because it is. It is a different story like has never been seen before. But the reason is, is that he is a different man than the kind of stories that we've seen before. That I agree with. This is a different set of circumstances than we've seen before. And it's Ooh, it still certainly easy to understand when you have a middle-aged, man who's outwardly successful, who has a strong family legacy, who has a prominence in the community and a reputation, but is living a lie. Is living a lie. And that leads to and can lead to those pressures being overwhelming. Can? And actions like this happening. Well, did it? Husbands, husbands have been killing wives, unfortunately, for years. And husbands killing sons goes back as far as King Harry, probably further. And those pressures mount right. and someone becomes a family annihilator. I like that he slowed down his delivery, too. Can I have the computer input, please? I think the fake sketch is a very good visual to use with the jury because it shows the lengths he will go to. But does getting a fake sketch of someone and hiring a suicide for hire, is that enough for them to also say, yes, he would kill All right. his family. We gotta do a little law school. Ah, jury instructions. I'm certainly not a professor, but we need to go through a few of the concepts here. And one of the most important concepts is the fundamental role, one of the fundamental roles while y'all are here. As the judge has told you, he's the judge of the law, but y'all are the judge of the facts. And what does judge of the facts mean? Well, a big part of that is that he's going to go through the jury instructions and what they need. Credibility. You determine ah! You determine which witnesses you want to rely on or not rely on. You can rely on a part he's of a witness's get, testimony. He's going to get to reasonable doubt. Testimony, one against many, many against one. It's up to each one of you individually to make that dis determinations and decisions and then to collectively discuss those into a group decision. But credibility is important. Is it believable? Is what somebody's telling you believable? Is it the truth? And there's many things you can consider in credibility, but a few of those are the demeanor, 
of the witness on the witness stand, whether the witness has a reason to be biased, whether the testimony of the witness was contradicted on one hand or supported or corroborated on another, so this is whether the, the jury witness instruction. has been dishonest in the past. This is the text of the and jury again, instruction on credibility. Witnesses all against one, one against others. That was one of the big and instructions they used in depth. We heard an argument as well. Portions of a witness's testimony as you see fit. My third pen Same thing goes for experts. Trial. Expert is a legal determination that allows them to give an opinion. It Just depends. because someone's qualified as an expert doesn't mean that you have to accept their opinion. You can judge that based on the your assessment of the credibility and the relevance and the believability of that testimony. Give the There's weight to yeeting the different phone about that you someone's find an expert. needed or appropriate. Ah, shit. Beyond a reasonable doubt, I talked about this at the beginning of the case. And it's our burden. It's a burden we welcome. It's how this system works, that we have to prove the guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And what is a reasonable doubt? A reasonable doubt is a doubt that makes a reasonable, honest, sincere juror hesitate to act. It's proof that a reasonable person would not hesitate to rely on in their affairs. But a reasonable doubt is not and leaves you firmly convinced of the guilt of the defendant, but it doesn't have to overcome every possible doubt. It doesn't have to overcome every possible doubt. It does not it to. have to overcome all possible doubt try a case against a defense attorney and he would pull up a picture or something right here I have the Mona Lisa oh gosh and he would tear off a piece like that and oh. say ladies and gentlemen oh okay that's reasonable doubt and my response to that is you can still tell it's the Mona Lisa you still know what this is right yep you still know what it is and that's reasonable doubt okay? I like to you see this example making the rounds convinced. across the country then it's your duty under the oath that you've taken as the law as the judge will give you the law to convict the defendant this direct is an example I've seen a lot direct directly pr proves the existence that of the fact laugh. and circumstantial evidence is proof of a chain of facts and circumstances indicating the existence of that fact and we talked a little bit about that at the beginning sometimes people in common discussions will say oh the case is just circumstantial but the law says that doesn't matter it's the, the same. circumstantial evidence can be just as good <coughs> as direct evidence it is just as good it makes no distinction between that and the judge will charge you on that there's no greater degree of certainty required of circumstantial evidence than of direct evidence the circumstances must be consistent, consistent with each other, with each when other taken together, point when taken together. To the of the defendant circumstances must be consistent with each other I'm when taken together point thing, conclusively to the but about being inside and you go outside and it starts raining and then you know it's raining okay because you got direct evidence you're getting wet but if you go inside and you're in a closed room and all of a sudden it gets dark and you hear thunder and you uh hear the wind rustling and you hear the, the rain coming down on top of the roof and then after an hour or so you go outside and the sun's shining but there's limbs all down in the yard and it's wet as far as the eye can see and there are puddles in the yard and puddles in the driveway is there any reasonable doubt what happened that it rained it rained now again I'll, I'll say it again supposedly i guess somebody could have sprayed the whole neighborhood with a hose and and blown a fan to blow the uh the wind down or blow the limbs down simulate uh winds but that's not a reasonable doubt ladies and gentlemen circumstantial evidence can be just as strong as direct evidence it is just as strong the law makes no distinction just because it's circumstantial all right let's talk about murder murder yeah. is the willful killing of someone with malice aforethought it's the unlawful and willful killing of any person by one with malice aforethought the crime of murder is really as far as the elements go simple fairly simple it should have been simple the, the operative terms here the most important terms are malice which is the mental state that the person must have a and a forethought. forethought but let's talk about those what exactly do they mean malice and it could be any of these it can be the hatred ill will or hostility towards another but it also can be the intentional doing of a wrongful act with an intent to afflict an injury under the circumstances that the law would infer an evil intent 
It could be a general malignant recklessness of the lives and safety of others. It could be a wicked or depraved spirit intent on doing wrong. It used to be called it could depraved be using heart murder ages ago. Firearms, shotgun, and a things blackout. Things used to be more dramatic. To blow somebody away. Some jurisdictions probably do still call it depraved heart murder. A forethought. Sounds like it has to be planned, and certainly planning would account for a, th a forethought, but it can maybe be conceived at the very moment, a split second or, or in conjunction with the act. So a forethought doesn't require planning it can be picking for that up the gun and firing malice to it. occur. All it has to do is exist in the moment, just a split second Snap. or in the My moment you want to. that the act occurs. So when that trigger's pulled, as long as there's that Intentional do it. doing of a wrongful act, intent to inflict an injury. That would be an evil intent. It's the wrong slide. A malignant recklessness, which you can infer from the circumstances of the case, then that's all you need. And how do you do that? I said infer. Because people don't always yell out what their intentions are. You have to infer it from the circumstances of the case itself. Look at the crime scene, look at what happened, look at the backstory, look at all the circumstances that come together, and you can infer malice from those. Last little bit of law school. Malice and drugs. Voluntary intoxication does not impair a person's ability to act with malice aforethought. Oh, they That's a legal might, principle. They thought he might argue. If you voluntarily get intoxicated, yeah. it is not a defense to a crime. They thought he might argue he's not high and he didn't decide the malicious nature of that crime. If one voluntarily intoxicates themselves, they are just as responsible for their actions as when they are not intoxicated. And the judge, again, take what the law comes from the judge, but this is a legal principle that you will hear. Voluntary intoxication is not a defense to a crime. And why does the law say that? Well, you can't take whatever it is and deny responsibility for what you've done under the law. I don't think he's going to argue that, Craig. Right. quickly because we've already talked about it and just for scheduling I'm gonna have to stop my argument so that we can all eat um, but uh, and I'll give you all a chance to get away from this for a little bit but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of this that we just talked about but very quickly gathering storm in Alex's life we talked about the family legacy you heard of how important that was to him and how important that was to this family and how it was in danger because of the boat case the criminal charges as well as the civil charges. That legacy was in danger. And it was threatening also to expose him for who he really was, which would totally destroy his part of that legacy. Lose his career, lose his bar license, face consequences like he's never seen. He's also a successful lawyer and a part-time prosecutor. And as we go through and talk about the circumstances of this case and talk about the crime scene and the timeline and all the rest of it, think of it with that in mind, that this is an individual who is trained to understand how to put together cases, complex <coughs> cases. He's been a prosecutor. He's done complex car wrecks. He understands the law. He's given closing arguments to juries before. So when you Apparently have lots of a defendant like that, be thinking about whether or not this individual is constructing defenses and constructing alibis. You've talked about his law practice. You've heard how lucrative it is. I had to struggle with him to get him to admit that he was wealthy 
making more than a million dollars a year. Um, I'll let y'all decide whether or not that's wealthy, but he admitted ultimately that you know that was that was not uncommon for him to make that much money on top of stealing and borrowing on top of that. All right, I'm going to switch so that we again, don't keep I want losing. I want to highlight this: is that they get. I'm going to switch so we don't keep losing parts of um, parts of the exhibits of the demonstratives. If he's out of money in May, I can't handle he's it. He's not going to unless he can borrow it or steal it. There's no closed caption at the moment anyway. So and the hounds were at the gate. The hounds were at the gate. It's dramatic. All right. We talked about this. Uh, he's got, uh, you heard, I think, uh, Jeannie describe him as having intentional chaos. Uh, we, we had the land deals. He's servicing this huge Much debt layer. He constantly needs new money coming in. And this has been going on for more than a decade, a constant hamster wheel. The prosecution always goes first. They have the burden. The stress and the pressure of that would be extreme because it's been going on for so long, always having to stay one step ahead of the game, always having to beg, literally beg, don't sing borrow, Aladdin. or don't steal sing Aladdin. Don't sing Aladdin. Don't sing Aladdin. for over a decade to have the truth from being exposed. That's been going on all that time. The big cases, his partners think he straight, he's straightened it out and paid off his debts, but he hadn't. He's getting paid millions of dollars, but he's stealing on top of that, it's not enough to keep that hamster wheel going. So he borrows and he steals. The methods I mentioned, you got the PSB checks, you got the fake forge. Okay. You got fake business expenses, running the firm card, and from his family and his law partners. We know how he steals. You're not here to prove how he Each steals. Prove how he murders, please. On him being able to sit down. Please stop proving how he steals. And look someone in the eye. Please prove how he murders. And convince them that what they're doing is right. <sighs> when in reality, that wasn't happening. And all those clients trusted him based on those. And we sat there and went through that. And it oh, may have been it exhausting, liked. and I apologize for that. But he couldn't tell you about it one conversation that he had that stuck with him. Murder, Creighton. That's how easily it came to him. Yep, lying came easy. Is that relevant to your consideration of what he had to tell, say to you? That's for y'all to decide. Couldn't name one conversation. Just had that same answer that he had rehearsed. And didn't want to talk about any of those individuals who trusted him. Because he stole from them. Because he looked you in the eye and asked you to do the same. Creighton. Down to the bottom. It's not just the clients, too. It's his staff. They're doing the paperwork. They're filling all that out. He had to fast talk them as well. Okay. We don't need four methods of stealing. Alex's situation, I think, is akin to a Ponzi. Great. And a Ponzi's don't kind of like a pyramid scheme. Don't get into a Ponzi scheme. New God money damn it, coming in to pay old investors, and it works. It'll work for a long time as long as you can keep that money coming in. But the second you can't, the second that you're out of options, it crashes and burns. That's how every Ponzi crashes and burns, and that's the situation fundamentally his finances were like, and that's the situation that was arriving in June of 2021 when he was at the scene with the victims minutes before they died and lied to everyone he would listen about. That's a good argument. A gathering storm. The boat case. Not the clip art. Other factors that were arising, each one leading to that inevitable day of reckoning. You had the trial lawyers conference where he was confronted Mark Tinsley was confronted by Alec. Alec, of course, denied it. Everybody's lying on Alec. Alec's telling you the truth, even though everyone who knew him had no idea who he was. Everyone. No one knew who he really was. The people who came in here and said we thought this about him, not a single person knew who he, who he really was. That's how convincing he is. But he denies this confrontation when Mark Tinsley was like, he bows up on Mark Tinsley. He's like, what you doing, man, about the boat case? What you doing, Bo? And Mark says, you're going to have to pay money to the Beach family. 
millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Alec doesn't have that. He's barely one step ahead of the game at this point. He doesn't have insurance coverage anymore, or at least not a big umbrella policy. And why? Because his insurance company dropped him after the Satterfield case. Insurance company thinks the money went to the Satterfield boys, but it didn't. They don't know that he's stolen it all, but they don't want to insure him anymore. So he doesn't have that to help him pay the Beach case. And so what's the one hope he has? And that's the Ferris case. And it's tried, and you get a verdict in February of 2021, $792,000. And eventually, he tells Chris Wilson, I'm going to structure those, which is a lie, and gets the fees sent to him in March. And is spent in two months. But the boat case isn't going away. Mark says, Show us your books if you're telling me you're broke. I think his testimony was they said that he could probably cobble together a million dollars, which I guess that's broke for him, but it wasn't enough. And so they refuse, and that's what leads to the motion to compel. And there's been a lot of argument about, oh, is that going to be granted or not? Will the judge have granted it? What we do know is that Mark Tinsley said that's what he was seeking to do, and he was seeking to do it because he had been told by the defense that he didn't have money. So he's like, prove it. None of us believe that, knowing what you, we know about you in this community. Prove it. Well, Alec can't have anybody subpoenaing his financial records because it's all going to be apparent. That Ford account is going to open right up. He can't have that happen. It will all end. He'll lose his career. He will lose his livelihood. He will face investigations and consequences like he's never, that he's, like he's been able to avoid his entire life. But if he can just stay one step ahead, just one month longer, one day longer, then he's never going to have to face that accountability that he has to face. The hearing is scheduled for June 10th, 2021. And no one's here to argue to you that it's definitely going to be granted. All we're arguing to you is what the witnesses said they were intending to do. And as you've seen in court over the past six weeks, things happen and a process starts. And once that process starts, there's a conclusion to it. Okay. There's a conclusion to that. Yep. And then you heard from Tony Satterfield, who got up on the stand and talked about the fact that there was some coverage about this case as we move into the spring of 2021. And he hears from Alec, and Alec lies to him and says, yeah, we're, we're hoping to get this case moving. And you saw the text message to that effect when the reality was that it had already been stolen. How's he going to pay that, ladies and gentlemen? That's millions of dollars. Okay. It's millions of dollars. And eventually, eventually, they're going to figure out that this money's already been paid. So? The Satterfields are going to find out the it's insurance paid. company thinks it's gone the right place. At some and? Point, the question is going to get asked, and that alone is going to break everything apart. But those questions getting asked don't mean you kill your family, Creighton. Ferris case, this is when his paralegal finds the expense check and not the fee check. And I've already told you this part of the story, and y'all have heard the testimony, but it sets off that inquiry from the second juror. So now we have this on top of everything else that we're mentioning. This is like nothing he's ever experienced. He's always been able to stay one head, step ahead of the game. But after the boat case, his appetites increased greatly. He started stealing too much millions on of dollars. And now too he's running much. out of options. And all these factors are converging. In the weeds. All they're converging. And they're converging on one week, one day. Keep quoting songs. I'm going to be tempted to sing them because you have lost arrives. my interest by getting back into the weeds. <clears throat> his father's in the hospital. There's a confrontation with Jeannie. What is that? 
Alec tells her, manages to ward off the conversation by saying Mr. Randolph is terminal. Oh my God. He, of course, denies that, so I guess Jeannie's lying on him, too. But that's what she says happened. Talk about his guilt after He's the fact. working on the boat case. We go back to consciousness of guilt. We were doing better. And then the tragedy happens. And it worked. It's I think it is the sort of Damocles hanging over him, but I don't know why. It's part of the reason. The pressures on this man were unbearable, and they were all reaching a crescendo the day his wife and son were murdered by him. All on that day. And in the wake of this, everything changes. People stop asking about these things. The community has changed like you would expect. People are concerned. They're scared. They're worried. And everything's changed. The backlash from the boat case has gone away, and all of that has changed. And that's why Mark Tinsley thought his case was over. This may seem like, really? But who would understand that better than him? This is exactly the kind of work he did. His skills as a lawyer were understanding the emotional value of a case. That's understanding the good use of, of testimony. If you have a sympathetic plaintiff and an unsympathetic defendant, that is in the civil world, that's a big case. But if those get reversed, if those change, if all of a sudden your defendant is more sympathetic, it changes it. It changes the entirety of what Mark Tinsley's position on this case was for the Beach family, that Alec was going to have to pay money. And that's what he told you from the stand. He said the second I, if Alec had been the victim of some unsuspect or some random vigilante, the entirety of the case has changed. And I'm not taking the same position. I'm not trying to demand that level of recovery. Yep, that's what he said. He gets a 750. Well, he gets 600 of it. Ultimately gets a 750 loan. He convinces Chris Wilson. That heads off to Ferris. That's pretty much the main thing he did after this was to make sure he could get that money, enough of it to Chris Wilson so that he would send an email to the law firm saying, hey, everything's cool. I got it. It's all good. And that's what the law firm thought. It's the main thing he did in the wake of the murders of his wife and son was he made sure to stay again one step ahead of the game because he had more time now. He had time he didn't have on June 7th, but he had it now. I'm trying and to keep my head in the game, Creighton, and I'm struggling because we're it's so far in the did. weeds. It's the main thing he did. That not even High School Musical robot. can rescue my brain at this point. I know it seems like a lot, but you have to consider the unique circumstances of this particular man. This particular man who has proven over and over again that he will do anything to keep that hamster wheel going. I think he's going to save the timeline until after lunch. He's They're going to break for lunch for soon. He just finally reached a point that he had never reached before. And he snapped. Why aren't we saying that? If that's what you think. Of course, think. the hearing on well, the motion to compel gets canceled. Who, who would go forward with that in the wake of what's happened? That goes away. Fair. It doesn't. I think you heard from the testimony up there, it doesn't get rescheduled till long after everything crashes and burns in September. It doesn't even get rescheduled in the wake of this. They don't have to worry about that either and the potential that had for exposing who he was, because the second somebody looks at his accounts, the second his own partner, Danny Henderson, looks at his accounts as in representing him and says, well, let me see him, he can't do that. He can't do that. He can't even show him to his own partner. Because what's going to happen? They're going to see it too. He can't let that happen. Or everything falls apart. And he loses everything, including that legacy that you heard from individuals up there is so important to him, more important than anything. I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is the timeline. And, You're not, and you no. can see as we, oh, I'll let y'all look okay. at that. Financial timeline, yeah, fuck that. How this Murder develops, timeline. how this 
hamster wheel. I thought he was going to zoom, zoom through the murder timeline. Step ahead of the game. <laughs> you know, we've talked about <laughs> the red beard and the zero knighted. Those are the land deals that went bad. They get charged zoom, off. Zoom, zoom. Palmetto State Bank, you know, still dealing with him. He zoom, then eat. done. Appoints Russell Lafitte a conservator and borrows up to one million dollars from the Plyler girls accounts without their knowledge. I do like the background color for the PowerPoint, though. I, I, and then he has to steal money from the I'm Badger case, where he's already making a huge Grayton. amount of legal fees. He has to steal money from the Badger case to pay off the Plowler girls before they turn 18. Zoom. And then there's an Zoom. accounting for that. You said you weren't. You said you weren't going to get the Then he opens the up the Forge account. Lies. And it continues. Oh, fake Forge. 338,000 from Dion Martin. Johnny Bush, Manuel Sanders, and Richard, 225. He's maxing out a million dollar line of credit. You're maxing out my patience. The only way to stay afloat is to beg, borrow, and steal. He's maxing out a million dollar line of credit. He steals some more money, but he's I'm not right going to get into it. He, he, he read every March single of 2018, point. he's now maxed out not only a million dollar line of credit, but also a six hundred thousand dollar line of credit. Uh, not a the financial fraud like timeline. The, the murder out. timeline. Then the boat crash happens, and look what happens to the figures. 3.7 million, 1.1 1 .1 million, $1 million. Side note, look how clear it is when you have a shit ton of evidence. Look, look how clear, look how clear. Real easy to connect answer. the dots. He's just highlighting to the jury where it's hard to connect the dots. He said he wasn't gonna read the whole timeline and he is. Stop it, Creighton. Murder. This is uh, some of the exhibits. Holy this shit. Is, uh, as you recall, there'll be the statements and there are Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this the is what evidence we have. Assets on June seventh, twenty twenty one. We live in and the, the weeds. Reds are his liabilities. That one's green, but it's negative. And then over here, that's where he was. He has said this a couple four months later. He borrowed seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. We know. And still ended up three hundred forty seven thousand dollars in the hole, which part of that had to cover. I think. It was called the most generous overdraft policy ever conceived. Yes. I mean, in fairness, though, he did get a five dollar overdraft charge. Right there, so. That was funny. Anyway. At the time that it happened, it's not funny. All right. What else do we have? Because we talked about a lot of things about the finances, and I know <gasps> that there's been a lot of that. But it's really the only way to understand all the things that were affecting this middle-aged, outwardly successful professional man. The way he says middle-aged, I feel attacked like no one had ever seen. Well, we've got the pills. Oh my God, we're in the Everglades. He claims he's had a pill addiction for 20 years. But what does he say about that? We've he says gone. it makes him paranoid. He says it makes him agitated. Yeah. He says opiates get into him energy. Yep. Using common sense about that. Oh, but great. he also says- Don't go there, buddy. And he even said this in the telephone interview after the side of the road, that the withdrawals will make you do anything anything to get rid of them that is the point Creighton you have found the point that's common sense as well we know how powerful opiates can be and how the addiction of opiates can be extremely powerful the talk withdrawals about not being dope sick can be extremely powerful talk about that more but he's also saying he's taking a thousand milligrams a day and he's trying to blame all his theft on that but that's not what these records reflect. They reflect an insatiable desire for money and a hamster wheel that's been going on for a long time. And you don't really see the escalation from his drug dealer until March of 2021. Oh, the money too, Cousin Eddie? I would ask you also, one of the, the tenets of juries is common sense that's what you're here for is for an individual and then a collective common sense i don't think Creighton's common ever heard sense, of ADHD. A thousand milligrams a day does that sound survivable he sat there on that stand and told you that's what he was taking and as we're going to go through this process we're going to talk about what he said on the stand and how many times on the fly can we please do that that he looked you in your eyes and didn't tell you the truth He's very good, good at it. His good. own partner said that. Yes, that. Let's talk about that. He's very, very good at it. Yep. Great. I would love to talk about that. I'll leave it to you to decide 
whether can we be done with this part by lunch? Survivable of opiates. So after lunch, we can talk about murder. And if you, if it was that you could still engage in work, have a successful practice, and then on top of that, engage in these complex conspiracies to steal functioning addicts and fool everyone are a whole thing and live a life and how people outwardly think that you're uh you know who you, who you profess to be in public it's almost like addiction if you were taking a thousand milligrams a day does that make common sense i submit to you ladies and gentlemen it doesn't i have no doubt that he was taking opiate pills but i think he looked you and i would submit to you <laughs> to decide whether or not he looked yeah. you in the eye. Careful, Creighton. And claimed him out. That's inconsistent with whatever else Careful. we know about this man. That's really inconsistent with survivability. It's inconsistent with life. As a matter of common sense. He can never function at the level he's been functioning. Keeping up with these pressures, staying one step ahead for over a decade if he was taking that much dope. I would submit to you. Just one other lie that I would submit to you is a lie that he's trying to get you. He to keeps believe, saying I would submit to you because he can't vouch. Him, as if the dope was argument. the cause of the money and the cause of his issues, when the reality is it wasn't. This has been going on for a long time. He's basing this off of Alex's testimony. But what else That's about being based this? off of Alex's testimony? You've seen the interviews. And we're going to play some clips of these interviews, but I'm not going to play them all for you again. You've watched them. And they but can. if you have any questions, go back and watch them. He talks about being paranoid. Listen, watch those interviews with, when he's with Dave Owen. He's, he doesn't look like he's withdrawing from any drugs. His, his responses are appropriate. He's, he's uh, not in... in Displaying any paranoia? He seems very comfortable in his interviews. He's smooth. I mean, he is sweaty. He's focused on the events. He's focused on trying to get information about the case from law enforcement officers, which is interesting in its own right. Why is he so focused on that? And in Savannah, where supposedly he was detoxing, he sat down, as you've heard the testimony, with a composite, composite sketch artist and went through the whole process to come out with this picture. Right, and that contradicts what you which said I earlier. Swear about me. Guy. Is it that he would? How do you do that? How do you do that if you're on that much dope? So why did he tell you that, ladies and gentlemen? Why did he look you in the eye and tell you that as he sat there on that stand trying to explain what was going on? It's interesting also that in one of the interviews with law enforcement, there were three interviews, June 8th, June 10th, and August 11th, before we get to the side of the road, that he mentions that Paul was a little detective. That's very interesting for him to mention that because yes, he heard from Mary Proctor, Maggie's sister, that Maggie called Paul that, the little detective specifically in reference to Paul paying attention and trying to keep Alec from taking pills. Yeah. Why would he bring that up? Because That's in his mind, that he bring up. Because that was what that was in reference to. And what do we know? We know that in May, if we talk about all the pressures that are coming upon him, all these financial things that we've talked about, this exhausting hamster wheel that's been going on forever, the need to beg, borrow, and still stay one step ahead, and he's running out of options there. On top of that, we know in May that Paul sends a text to him saying, Mom found some pills. We need to talk. Yes. This is much more helpful. Mom found some pills, and we need to talk. Another pressure from Paul and Maggie on him. A, I would submit and if you a look large at the text, pressure. The weekend of the ball game on June the seventh. Them taking his pills away is a evidence. big, big part of this case, Creighton. A big part of this case. Alec is not at the game, and he's texting back and forth. And Maggie's like, 
don't come if you feel I'm bad. Glad they got and to he's this. like, well, they're make, you know, I think I can get a late checkout. And then he's like, at one o'clock, they made me leave. I submit to you, it's a reasonable inference they were on him at this time. They were watching him like a hawk. Opiates, the most powerful of withdrawals. And everything's coming to a head, including this as well. Run out of money, running out of options, doesn't get paid in any significant way until December. Already stole the fares fees and spent that money in two months. Has an expensive pill habit and accountability and consequences will do undo everything in his life. Everything that is his self-identity. Everything, the only things that he cares about. Legacy, he doesn't care wealth. about lying to his partners and his family and his friends and his clients if it will delay accountability for him. He'll do it in a heartbeat. And all of that is about to be undone. Your Honor, now's Here a good time to break for lunch. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Yep. You can right. see the look. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take one hour and 15 minutes for lunch. Please do not discuss the case. One hour and 15 minutes puts us back here at just about 1.20 p.m. Central. I'll wait till the judge says it, but that's when I'll be back. We're going to talk about the beginning of these closing arguments and answer some questions, and we're going to take a lunch break and be back here attorneys ah, get no. to do today that they haven't in the past is a weave all Blah. stop <laughs> let's i want to see the judge say what time that cut away way too fast okay um we'll be back at what time you're on we'll be in recess one hour and 15 minutes okay all the attorneys are looking at their watches all right so that puts us here around what 115 that's right 120 yes i think that's right that puts us here at 120 um all right so if that puts us back at one if court's back at 120 central i'll be back at 115 central so we have a few minutes to chat let's chat about this closing and answer some questions and then take a lunch break so far i feel well let's do that first Hold on, hold on. Let's let's gloss. Wait. Let's gloss. We're gonna gloss. And then we're gonna and then we're gonna swoop. And then we're gonna talk about the beginning of these closings. <laughs> let's do that. I don't know if we're in the first half of Creighton Waters closing or not, because we're resuming after lunch. What I do know is Creighton said, I'll keep this brief and talking about the financials and then did anything but keep it brief. He is knee deep in a PowerPoint talking about the gathering storm that was facing Alec Murdaugh. And I personally, in my opinion, think that he went too deep into the financial crimes. I thought he was doing very well to talk about um he fluidly looked people in the eye and lied. He stole from his clients and doesn't even remember the conversations because it was so easy for him to lie and steal from them. Then, um, then to get into the fact that he was lying to his whole family, he was about to be exposed. Everything was about to come to a head. Great. There was pressure. Great. That's the gathering storm, but also to get into the fact that that gathering storm included um, Mark Tinsley, fine. But then when they get knee deep into the woods of fake forge and real forge and this client and that client, I think it is too much in depth. The jurors know that he was stealing, put up the amount of money. His bank accounts were at this. The amount he was stealing was this. And he was ramping up how many much he was stealing. And then his family's on him like a hawk with the opioids and getting into Paul being the little detective. We saw him talking about that right at the end before lunch. We are not done with closings. Getting into them um, monitoring his pills, him going into withdrawals while they're at the baseball game the day before the murders, and tying that back around, I think is very helpful. 
a little too deep in the weeds on the financial for me. I think he needed to keep it brief. The jury knows how capable he is of lying, how fluidly he lies. Accountability at the door, I think, is a good theme of this case because we saw it. The state is arguing accountability with the finances. Everything's coming to light. He's going to be shamed in front of his family when this comes to light. He hasn't tied that together yet, but he's going to be shamed in front of his family when all this comes to light. And he knew it was coming to light. So on the 7th, he took their lives. When he knew that the rest of it was coming out and he needed to be a victim again, he hired someone to stage the roadside incident and then lied fluidly enough to make a composite um, of the, you know, kind and attractive gentleman that stopped to help him. He lies as easy as breathing. Fine. The opioids are crashing down upon him. Fine. You would do anything to make the withdrawal stops. Why didn't we lean into that more? Maybe we will after lunch. And so he is building, I think, towards everything is crashing around and this is the only way to preserve himself and his legacy. Will will we see him tie that up after lunch? Maybe. Do I think it was too far into the weeds? With the financials? Yeah, I do. We don't need seven PowerPoint slides on, on financials. Um, but I mean, y'all are here for the dramatic clip art, either because it's cringy, it's hilarious, or you're just over it. So with that, um, you know, there was definitely some some interesting clip art used by the prosecution. I think the way he went into the jury instructions and explained them was great. You have to explain them. He explained doubt really well. He explained reasonable doubt really well. The defense should lean into that more. He explained um, he explained malice really well. He went through the jury instructions. He went through three of them, I think. He went through reasonable doubt, direct and circumstantial evidence, and the murder instruction, which is the malice of forethought depraved heart. And I thought he went through those really well and clearly for the jury. After lunch, he has to start tying these back to the murder. Because right now, I don't know, chat, do you agree or disagree? Please, You're welcome to do it either. I don't need the chat to agree with me. But it feels like he's doing gathering storm stuff murder like it feels like the bit in the middle is very mushy gathering storm pills this this that stuff murder <laughs> it just i need the middle bit to be filled in and i hope that he will get to the timeline of the murders because the timeline puts it there and the state said it. The timeline puts it there. The timeline gives him the opportunity and the means. And then he mentioned at the beginning of his opening that they will be talking about guilty conscience and his behavior after the crimes. I think those are the most powerful parts. And I think we will get those after lunch. One will hope. One will hope. If he goes back into the financials after lunch, the only proper response is going to the financials are done. We're done. Timeline, opportunity, opportunity. Who else had the opportunity with these weapons in that timeline? Timeline, opportunity, consciousness of guilt. That's what I hope to see after lunch from the prosecution. We'll see. All right. With that, I'm going to get to some of your questions and we're going to get to some lunch. Don't we all need it? Don't we all need some lunch? Don't we all need some lunch? We do. It's just time. It's just time. Um, Brianne said if he can come back and pound away at the murders, then he was just waiting for lunch to keep them attentive. Yeah. And maybe knowing that he didn't want that part to get broken up. Um, Agape Forever said not convinced by, of guilt by Waters closing so far. And that's fair. Remember, here's the here's how closing go. Prosecution goes first. They carry the burden. He said they welcome the burden. They carry the burden of proof. They go first. Then the defense. Then the prosecution. I generally, as a personal matter of drama and intrigue, saved some of the fiery bits for the rebuttal. Because the rebuttal is the last thing they will hear before they go deliberate from the attorneys. So some of the, the drama, if you will, the fiery bits. Murderer! That stuff. Rebuttal. I don't think he's going to scream murderer. Um, but, you know, 
the drama, the this person sitting in this courtroom, ladies and gentlemen, this is the person who did the thing. But drama. All right, some questions. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I didn't do it. We didn't fact around. Also, y'all, don't forget to like and subscribe and do the YouTube things and engage. We're here that to do that. But also, we are trying to bump. I appreciate long crime, but we are trying to bump long crime off of live trending because we have like five times the viewership. So why? So why? So we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep pounding at the desk <laughs> till we put some respect on the channel name, YouTube. Ah, uh, YouTube. It's like we love independent creators, but we're gonna populate news organizations first, even when they have less viewers. Mm-hmm. Um I love I love this platform. But oh did I do mean court TV. What did I say? I mean court TV. Law and crime is always going to beat us. Well, not always. For now, they will beat us with the number of viewerships because they have the three camera view until we get our own court feeds and then game on. All right. Wait, I for, that's the third time I forgot. Eventually, eventually we'll, we'll just, we'll take it for ourselves. All right, let's see. Emily, are you competitive? I was a division one college athlete. <laughs> we get competitive sometimes, sometimes. I ter- tell you about it rarely. Um, all right, let's see. We need to go to questions. It's time to fuck around. Lisa asking the important questions. Will the jury have counseling available after the verdict? It depends on the jurisdiction. I very much hope so. This case makes me incredibly sad thinking that Maggie and Paul will not get justice. Um, I'm sure the jurors will be left with sadness as well. This is going to be heavy for the jurors. And just from my own lived experience, there are things you can't unsee. And the jurors cannot unsee what they have been through in this trial. They have taken six weeks out of their lives away from work. They have had to see unthinkable crime scene photos. I can viscerally understand what those crime scene photos are like or, or are like. Um viscerally see what those crime scene photos are like uh, just based on my own my own cases um they should they should um get some kind of a support i don't know if the jurisdiction will offer it i hope that they do this is a lot for them and processing it is a lot um that is true of all of all uh that have to deal with the criminal system it is it yeah, it is. Shelby G said, what do you think Ronnie meant when he said he saw terrible things the court hasn't seen? I've been thinking about that so much. Um, he was at the crime scene afterwards trying to clean, help clean up. And so viscerally being at the crime scene, viscerally seeing uh, uh, biological material, the blood, the smell, um, just from being at autopsies. It, sometimes it's not the visuals, but the smells that are so visceral that stay with you and and don't always go away in your memory. So I think what Ronnie was saying is that when he was at that crime scene, the things that he saw, pictures aren't to compare. The pictures are awful, but the pictures aren't to compare to what he experienced trying to go into that feed room after the murders and clean it up. And that, um, that is what it is. So let us, let us go. Um, Less the sequel said, spent the entire trial with you. Happy to spend closing arguments with you today, which is my birthday. Happy birthday for all the law nerds in the chat whose birthday it is. Happy birthday. And to all the lawnards who gifted memberships, I saw so many of you do that. We will have to add a special members only stream, like a trial decompression stream. So thank you to all of you um, that gifted memberships today as well. I saw so many of you do that. Um, I'm 20 in my mind. <laughs> That's fantastic. When they said Maggie faced her killer, I knew it was someone she knew. If it was a stranger, you would run. Uh, she was probably pleading to someone she knew or trying to process what she had seen with Paul. I don't disagree. Carissa said, did Alec try cases in front of the very judge he sits before now? I have no idea. It's a good question. I would guess not. 
um because this judge i believe normally sits outside of this county so i would i would guess not um because i think most judges there had been judges in this case that recused themselves because they knew alec from his trial practice and i imagine um that that's not the case but i don't know for sure that's just my supposition courtney said today is my sort of 31st birthday leap your baby <laughs> happy birthday happy seventh birthday courtney i'm celebrating with some cake and coffee for breakfast appreciate you cheers and next year you'll get to have your birthday on your birthday i think christy said fur baby is getting a tooth pulled today lots of the fur babies at the vets today um my my 43 year old bff is at the end of treatment options for pancreatic cancer i'm sorry just found out this morning Prayers are needed, plead. Um, Natha, prayers are sent. The Lawnard community is here to wrap you in hugs. That is a very hard day. Um, Snickerdoodle said, I celebrated my 49th birthday on Monday with y'all. My twins will be 16 this Friday. Best birthday present ever. Oh, 16 year olds. I don't know how I'll process that when it happens over here. It's it's coming around the bend. Coach Debbie said, Emily, I've watched this trial from the jump along with watching all the docs and listening to you, Peter, Runkle, and Rob, and I still have no idea. If I was a juror, I'd be freaking out. Yeah. This is a really hard one. I think it's a really hard one. Um, and that does not go well for the state. When when you're at the end of a trial going, this is really difficult, um, that leans towards doubt. For the record, your honor says thank you for cover <laughs> for thank you for covering. You're keeping me company during my road trip. Happy road trip. Drive safe. I'm gonna try to get to questions um so we can zoom zoom for lunch. Danny Goodman in the chat asked, and I can't pull it up because I would I would lose my place, asked, does the jury get to use the prosecution's PowerPoint during deliberation? No. They get the evidence, but they don't get the arguments and they don't get the demonstratives. So no, they don't. That's a great question. Thank you. Uh, Crystal, good luck for your surgery. Um, still on the fence with guilt or innocent. Crystal, I understand. And at the end of closings, we'll have that conversation again, hopefully at the end of today. Elephant Shoes said taking the first step today with assessment for potential ADHD diagnosis for my son. Nervous, but a sense of relief. Don't be nervous. Knowledge is power. The more you know, the better. Oh, the more you know is better. It's a good thing. The more you know. Don't be nervous. It's good things. So it's good to know. In Scotland, the courts pay the missed wages for jury duty. We put compensation reports and get our bosses to sign it. Jan Wallace, that's a fantastically humane way to do it. Um, our court system in a lot of ways does not feel like it takes into account the human element of how hard it is to come in contact with our court system as, as a victim, as a defendant, as a juror, as a lawyers, it is a big system and is a confusing system and it is not an easy system. I think juries get it right a lot of the time, if not most of the time, but it does not take away from it being difficult, especially to the jurors. Um, is Alex shackled in the courtroom? I have not seen anything that indicates he's still shackled well in the courtroom. Um, Zana, happy birthday. Can I get a shout out anytime, please? <laughs> Melakai, happy birthday. Happy 11th birthday. That is how old G is. Um, Healthy Mama said, I heard on another lawyer thread, email said one of the jurors told coworker they didn't think he was guilty. Probably speculation. Did it come from Reddit? Because that happened during the last uh, trial we covered in Brooks too. If, if a juror was removed, they would talk about it. Has anyone discussed why Alex was the chosen son and not Randy Randolph? Thanks for all you do. No, I haven't heard that. Uh, but we know from um, John Marvin that he was proud to not be a lawyer in the family. I think there's more going on in the family than we've heard in this trial. Rob in the fast lane said, how about when they hear place the 911 call, you can hear dogs barking, but AM isn't crying while the line rings. It's a very fair point. I don't know if... Um, if the prosecution will bring it up at all or if the jury will notice it. So, uh, questions. TX Carey said lying alibi only for time needed equals knowledge. Only guns missing were caliber used. No blood. He washed up. Bubba put away. Um, calling everyone to the scene, corrupting the scene. I feel like he's guilty. TX Carey, the, the state needs to argue that as cleanly as you did. As cleanly as we, when we've talked about what the state needs to tie together, that opportunity and means and then guilty conscience um but they're banging on about motive in the gathering storm so melissa said hi from the uk been in bed with the vid 19 i'm sorry but you do get to watch all of the trials so there's that 
Crystal said, question, I rewatched the Captain America video. I can't see a keypad on the door. Have you gone back and looked at that? I have not gone back and looked at that. Why would John Marvin lie? John Marvin, I don't know why John Marvin would lie about that. So, um, I'm really confused about the wooden area across the street that the jury went to today. Thoughts? I would need to see where it was, but it could be where the phone was yeeted. Misty said, given the massive scope of what this judge let in with all the other charges and crimes, do you think there could be a reasonable consideration for the trials? Could be double jeopardy. No, because uh, um, he's only on trial for the murder. He's only It goes to appeals, yes, if he's convicted, but he's only on trial for the murder. He's not on trial for the financial crimes. So no, he's not twice put in jeopardy on the financial crimes. Hopefully that helps. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to zoom, zoom to questions. Um, my own grandma said social worker curse words are my source of sustenance. Thank you for the very difficult and needed job that you do. Do jurors offer counseling after seeing graphic images? We talked about that. I hope this jurisdiction does. I don't know. Adventure Media YT said if they are using subsonic 300 blackout ammo, which is a big reason people use the 300 blackout, it would have been extremely hard to hear even outside. A very good point. I don't remember exactly what they said about the type of ammo. Nobody said it's not slander. Terms like hard-headed, stubborn, and rambunctious are compliments for labs. <laughs> they wouldn't bark at a stranger either because they've never met one. Nobody, that's fair. The guineas we've heard, the guineas, I know more about hogs and fowl than I ever wanted to know, but the guineas apparently would have been going nuts if there was a stranger on their property. So these are all compliments for a lab. All right, it's not Bubba Slander. Um, so if they prove Alec lied, which he admitted, can the jurors assume all of his testimony is a lie? Yes, they can. The jurors can say everything that he's saying is a lie. Um, and they read the instruction on, where is it? They read the credibility instruction first for that reason. They can eat everything he says. Crystal Boone, Emily, what are your thoughts on John Marvin and Buster removing guns from the front door, the front the uh, front floor of the house of Moselle? That was from the gun room. Um, I don't know the date that is, but if it's after the crime scene's cleared, which it seems to be after the crime scene is cleared, then there's nothing wrong about it at all. That's on SLED. They cleared this crime scene with a quickness that is unsettling. Um, what would be reasonable doubt? Is there a definition for that? We went through that in the jury instruction during the closing, and you'll hear about it more. It's not beyond all possible doubt. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. Is it reasonable? Here's the question, I think, if the state does their timeline well. Here's the state's question. Is it reasonable that Alec fell asleep during the very moments that his family was murdered and then got up and didn't go check at the kennels because he texted and he was like, whatever, went to visit his mom at a time he doesn't normally go to visit his mom, came home and in 17 seconds perceived that they had been murdered, that they were horrific murders, touched them, turned them over, had no blood on them, called 911, and then lied about the last time that he saw them. Is that a reasonable explanation that he didn't do it or that he did do it? I think that's what the state needs to argue. They've not gotten there. Question, what happens if the defendant... What happens with the defendant if the jury is hung? If you disregard the other crimes, he did. Well, it depends. Normally, in a case that's hung, and I've had a number of hung juries, in a case where a jury is hung, the defendant stays in custody if the prosecution decides to retry the case. Um, I've always retried the case unless I got transferred and couldn't retry the case myself, which only happened when I was in misdemeanor crimes. Um, but the defendant stays in custody until... The case is retried. Do you typically give your closing argument before or after instructions? What's your preference? After after instructions was always my preference. Gingy props, great question. Thank you. I love to talk. No. You asked me to talk about me. <laughs> how, how I like to do things. Thank you so much for taking me into consideration. I liked to do it after instructions. Why? Because the jury had heard all of the instructions and I could say, as the judge told you as you heard from the judge this is the instruction on this and this is the instruction on that but then one of the last things that the jury hears before they go to deliberate is not an hour of instructions it's me in my rebuttal and then it's you've heard all the argument you've heard all the things and now you go back to deliberate i'm the last thing that they hear 
I also hated having to do closing after lunch. Somebody said, Erica said, question, D1 athlete, Emily, I know you wouldn't tell by looking at me anymore. I played water polo um, at the University of Massachusetts. Because I'm 5'7". <laughs> USC was like, oh, you're not six foot. <laughs> UCLA was like, you short and kind of slow. UMass was like, oh my God, nobody here grew up playing water polo, but we have a division one team. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but I loved it. I got to play with uh, water polo players from all over the world. And I'm glad I got the opportunity to do it. Um, it's a very different college experience until I got hurt, but that's all in my TED talk. Can the lawyers object during closing if they don't agree with what's being said? No, only if it misstates, only if it misstates the evidence or the testimony or the law, only if it misstates one of those three. Um, yes, my brother also played water polo, but he's like a national champion from UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> he's also like six, four. Look, I got genetically wrong. No, that's not true. I'm much chattier than he is. Um, we got the gifts that were appropriate for both of us. <laughs> Mine was not height. And I also have very short arms. Whole set was not the thing for my arms are too short to play division one water polo. I'm very lucky that I got to, I'm not like Brenda via great. I did get to play again. I could, I will be, I have to eat. I can't, I have to stop talking about water polo. Um, Pat McCann in the chat. Yes, I did. To answer your question, Lauren Taylor, how much of your personal opinion influenced how you handled a case? Obviously you want to be objective, but I'm not sure that's easy. Um, most of the cases that I handled, I talked to my coworkers about, and there were DAs that I worked with that were, wonderful at starting with this person's innocent proved to me that they're guilty. And so it was always nice to run it by coworkers. So I tried to keep my personal opinion out of it. And I tried to make sure that I was checking myself with my coworkers, especially my most cynical coworkers, um, to get back to, let me explain this case to you. What am I missing? What am I missing? And we worked as a team, um, I also didn't want my personal opinion to influence cases. If you're trying to win as a prosecutor, you have already lost. So I think my dedication to doing right by not just the victims, but by justice and the defendants were my overarching goal. There were plenty of cases that my gut was, oh yeah, you totally did that. But I didn't file them. And there were cases where I'm like, I see how you did this, but we can't prove this. There is too much that we can't prove. We're not doing it. And that's very important. So my, I saw my goal as doing justice and justice doesn't just mean convicting people. And so that is a higher standard for me than just trying to convict people. So, but um, coworkers also helped. And there's time, there's times that it's heartbreaking. Look, it's not easy. It's not an easy job. The criminal justice system is not an easy, easy field. It's not an easy job. And it's heartbreaking to have to talk to victims and, and sit down and say, I believe you, I cannot prove it. And I'm sorry. It's not easy to do. Um, but that's what doing justice is. So it's hard. It's a hard job. YouTube's also hard in a much different way. <laughs> um, Sierra Madre or Sierra, sorry, I, I, I put a whole bunch of different words into that. Sierra made was a juror for a murder trial. Financial problem for modest income earners needs to change. Yes, it does. I agree. A juror jury duty is one of, I think our highest civic duties in the U S and they don't get treated that way. Uh, so, so staff said I was recently giving an ADHD diagnosis and I'm 44 and digesting that while enjoying the trial coverage between work meetings. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome to your brain. Now you get to figure out how it works for you. Um, Blair Hughes, I just saw your question. Would you have filed this case? I have said from the beginning, I would not have filed this case. Um, how will we know when the jury comes back? I will let you know, but the media will let us know. Thanks for all your knowledge. You're welcome. I'm going to see if there are any more questions real quick. 
Question, is it bad I'm surprised they even have slides? Abby Smith, no, that's not bad. I appreciate a PowerPoint. I really need them to get to the timeline. Ashley said, I was on a jury on a murder trial last year, still in therapy, and the victim lived less than a mile from me. That's hard, Ashley. It's, it feels like it's, it feels very personal. Um, can a jury member file a civil lawsuit for emotional distress from the trial? No, they cannot. Um, and I, court systems are doing a better job with helping jurors. Question, if the jury hangs and the prosecution wants to retry due to the amount of attention with this case, would Alec find a fair jury? That is a very real problem. A very real problem. Um, I think they would probably have to move the case. I don't know how I don't know how they do that after this trial. This is not as big as Duffy heard by any means, but locally it is. So um, too much talk about money. <laughs> Meredith, I agree. With that, y'all, I do not have a ton of time to eat. Um, I'm gonna go eat. Did y'all eat yet? You eat yet? Did you eat yet? Go eat. Y'all need to eat. We all need to eat. <laughs> we all need to eat. Um, Callie said, hated going after lunch. You and Poot are so similar. Oh, there are, there are definitely similarities for me and Poot. Kelly, I agree. Poot's always like, can we just break for the day, your honor? Me, always me, always me. Always want more time. Always needed more time. Always wanted more time to wrap my brain around something. And Poot's very much like, oh, your honor, it seems like we're at the end of this day. Me, always, always me. Can we just be done now? Me, since I was a kid. Me, like with our water polo coach, they're like, oh, we got five more minutes. It's like, yeah but it's Friday and we need to not smell like chlorine before we go party. So can we please be done? <laughs> Always. All right. With that, if you didn't eat yet, go eat, stay hydrated. Law nerds. We'll be back. You can go hop over to the chat. Don't forget to hit notifications over there. We're riding through, we're riding through closing arguments. I have a sinking suspicion. I'm going to go put up a poll on the other live. Go vote. I'm going to go put up a poll in the afternoons a video about whether or not closing arguments will finish today. I have a sinking suspicion we live here now. All right, and with that, I will see you after lunch. You can find all the Law Nerd goodies at lawnerdshop.com. Connect with me on social media at the Emily D. Baker. And don't forget to check out my podcasts, The Emily Show and the new podcast, Quick Bits, summarizing everything I talk about on my Tuesday and Thursday live streams. You know, when you only have time for just the quick bits. <laughs>